Welcome back to another enthralling episode of Creepcast. <laughs> I need to get like a nice uh, Tales from the Crypt or like a nice Dracula laugh. We need we need like a nice evil laugh. We do. We need we need to pay some absurd actor too much money. We need to get like a, I know he's dead, but like the Vincent Price laugh, you know. Uh, exactly yeah yeah i bet we i bet we could get uh christopher walken i bet he's got a good laugh we could commission that that's a good use Uh, of uh, 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 uh. that's why why i imagine christopher walken Uh, 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 uh. Uh, uh, yeah i'd love uh, to just be like welcome back to creepcast (laughs) 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 uh, today we are stepping out of our this is the first time this is virgin territory we're going into on this show it is the first time we were stepping out of no sleep, our comfort zone, and we are going into Twitter ARGs, which if you want to explain what Twitter ARGs to people so they kind of know what's going on. Absolutely. So basically, a Twitter ARG is normally when someone creates a Twitter account or at least a story within Twitter where they imply themselves to be the individual going through the stuff they're going through. Uh, some popular examples of that is things like Dear David. Uh, that's an example where the creator, just a normal Twitter user who's like, so this strange thing's been happening to me and they start to catalog supernatural events. That's one example. Another example is when you have an entire Twitter account dedicated to a story like The Sun Vanished. Uh, that's a very popular one. Uh, and the one we're going to be covering today is another example of a completely dedicated account, and that is the Gregory 88 account. So, uh, are you familiar at all with the Gregory 88 plotline? No, I don't know any of these. I, I'm going in fresh. I mean, I had a couple questions for you because it seems like you have experienced some of these before. Mm-hmm. Like, whenever people make these accounts, right? <clears throat> do they, uh, do, how, how long does it take for people to realize, like, oh, this is, uh, becoming. Like this is this is what this is, or, or, did, or did some of these start before people even knew what this archetype of storytelling was? A lot of them started before like the concept became popular. Like, um, for example, the Dear David guy, Adam Ellis, that's his name. Uh, the Dear David guy, Adam Ellis, he was just a, a normal Twitter user for years. I believe he worked at BuzzFeed, or at least uh, the movie got picked up by BuzzFeed eventually. But he do, he does, like, comics, like, he does co- comedic comics and stuff like that. Um, so he was, like, a popular Twitter user who all of a sudden was like, strange things are happening around my apartment. So that takes a really long time for people to be like, is this real is this, you know, a story or is this something strange actually happening to this guy? And some of the best Twitter ARGs kind of keep it in a gray zone, right? Of maybe this is someone who individually, like for you, Hunter, if for example, tomorrow you're like, there's this weird thing I keep seeing around the property and you start to catalog it, that could be an example of people not knowing if it's real or not. But typically, like if someone starts like a burner account to be like, there's something in the woods, like people catch on pretty quick. Um, But what's interesting about the format is where something like No Sleep makes the writer find creative ways to convey their piece of work or what have you to the audience. Mm. Um, or li- like, for example, they'll get to the end of the story and they'll be like, if anyone's reading this, blah, 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 it's posted here. Whereas on the Twitter ARGs, normally they are constantly keeping up with replies, tweets, things people are saying. It's like a live interaction with people who are reading, which is pretty cool. You can do some neat stuff with it. Yeah, I mean, that was kind of similar to the my girlfriend, uh, my dead girlfriend's message to me on Facebook yeah, story yeah. as so, well. Kind of interacting in that way. That kind of like interaction with these horror stories is such a fascinating way to tell it. And do we know exactly who Greg is? Not that I know of. Uh, it okay. may be known later on because the Gregory... So I'm actually familiar with this story specifically. I don't remember how it ends, which is useful for what we're doing today. Um, but I remember reading... Like whenever this ARG first started up, I saw some tweets about it and was like keeping up with it. Um, I don't think I kept with up with it till the ending. Um, but uh, I remember as it was coming out, there were a lot of people like oh cool what's happening oh and like interacting with him and stuff but i don't i don't remember him ever revealing himself as the creator or the author so it looks like the first tweet here was in july 22nd 2018 um pretty simple straightforward guess i'm gonna try twitter again (laughs) with a nice uh with a nice uh little what do you do emoji yeah just like it's a new social media account there's some early tweets in it where it's just kind of like Hey, I'm back to Twitter. Oh, I'm watching this TV show. 
this food was really good at the club last night, just to kind of making it feel lived in. But then our story begins on August the 27th of 2018. So the account existed for like a month before Gregory 88 got into the story of it, basically. Yeah, I mean, there's just some simple post of like, he's showing cocktails, he's showing like food, kind of give it just like a normal, a really, really normal approach to this stuff. I mean, it looks like it's just, I mean, like, you know, August 5th, maybe this year I, I'll, I will finally watch Lost. <laughs> it's kind of yeah, funny. Yeah, just like uh, basic tweets. Yeah. Right. And then you said it was, yeah, August 27th, 2018, Greg finds, he says, just found out my grandpa died, never really knew him, but still kind of a an interesting little segue there and then uh he has one follow-up says my mom never wanted to talk about him and i've never really asked sad face that is a sad face emoji moment. <laughs> what's fun <laughs> what's fun about it too is if you go to the replies on that tweet it's a bunch mm. of people tagging their friends being like it starts here this is the first tweet you can start here so <laughs> just, hey, just, hey, just right, right here right yeah, here right please here. start here yeah 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 you may begin. Right. Yeah, so that's fun. Guys, guys, grandpa died. It's right here. That is funny. <laughs> all, all, all the tags. Um, interesting. So this is this is just the nice little jumping off point. So does that mean too that whenever this first came out, because it's a thousand likes, it's not like some viral thing. I was almost expecting some of these tweets to have like, I don't know, forty thousand likes. You know, just to show like, oh, hey, look at the engagement on these. But it's relatively, I mean, little. Like it's it's still like the, with the amount of likes there's on it, it still feels very uh, real. You yeah, I mean? yeah, it feels like it could still be like a hidden little story you came across, which is like the really fun part about these ARGs, because imagine if you just came across this, like you didn't see it in a YouTube video or someone didn't say it was scary. It just popped up in mm -hmm. your feed one day. That's pretty cool. That is cool. October 29th, we have him. He says, made a new friend, and it's a picture of a slug. <laughs> a, nice <laughs> little, a nice little snail. Uh, so there you go. And then, and then it looks like it, it looks like it picks back up on October 29th. Um, yeah, so again, click, later so on, click on that tweet and then go to the top of the thread. And this is our first dive into the storyline. All right. Yeah. And we want to, I want to preface or as, as we want to preface this as well, is that a lot of these are going to be like, let us find these tweets. It's like kind of, it's, it's a weird, it's going to be a weird juggling act just to make sure that we're properly that we're doing not this. missing anything. Yeah, exactly. The, the narrative is being directed correctly. So like it, like he said, October 29th, 2018, it looks like at the beginning of this thread, it says something weird is happening in the woods outside my house and I don't know what to do. Okay. There you go. Yeah. 12,000 likes. I was like, they're, 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 now we're starting to get to some place here. Cool. So now we've truly get into the story on October the 29th of 2018. It reads, Something weird is happening in the woods outside my house, and I don't know what to do. I guess I should start at the beginning. This isn't really my house. It was my grandpa's, but I guess it's mine now. He died a couple months ago, and because of some tricky paperwork, I'm apparently responsible for it now. He lived pretty far away, up in the mountains by the lake. There are a couple other houses down the road, but they seem like they're empty for the season. I assume they're summer houses. I've been here for a few days, and it's really pretty, but it's super quiet and chilly. And then he attaches some images of what the nearby, you know, what the yeah. property looks like. To, yeah, basically a picture of a lake, essentially, and just it's a very wooded area, very isolated is what it looks like. Yeah, if, you, if you've seen, for audio listeners, if you've seen woods and water before, just picture that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, have you ever seen a lake before? Yeah, you yeah. Ever, you ever seen like water, but it's in one place and outside? That's what it is, yeah. Um, I know, it's a weird concept, I know. <laughs> <laughs> he continues on from that and says... My mom never talked about my grandpa, and I only met him once, when I was really young. I think they had a bad relationship, but the few times I asked about it, she got annoyed and changed the subject. So, basically, I don't really know what I'm doing here. This guy from my grandpa's estate basically told me the house is mine now, so I came up here to sell it as fast as I can and go home. I guess it's not that easy to just sell a house, especially one in the middle of nowhere. At any rate, I think I'm alone up here. Or... At least, I was. I figured I'd be up here for a couple weeks to get all this handled, and then I'd go home and be done with it. I'm on a break from grad school, so I don't have any other responsibilities at the moment. But now, weird things are starting to happen. It started on my third day here. There's a little town about 25 minutes away, and I'd gone to get some food and supplies since I don't know how long I'm staying. When I got back that evening, there was something strange on my door. It, mm. it, it was this artifact. I don't know what to call it. 
It was obviously handmade. It was made of sticks and twine and had some small bones tied into the middle of it. And for our audio listeners here, I would say it's reminiscent. It's basically a uh, st- like thin sticks making a triangle, and in the center of the triangle are two bones that are kind of tied between a uh, small piece of twine. Um, I would say very much just kind of think of like Blair Witch Project. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Of, um, yeah. Yeah, something, one of those things in the woods. Not necessarily a figure, but just a triangle. Still very creepy. Yeah, yeah. Basically, he comes home. There's this weird thing that looks like, probably like small animal bones. Although, I guess you could say those may be finger bones. Uh, but can, pro- I go on a, can, can I go on a limb here? Sorry to interject. If The, the first time... I see this on my door. <laughs> I'm not going back. I'm leaving. I'm like, leaving. Yeah. Grand, grand, grandpa just dropped off, and gave me a new house, and the area is kind of pretty. And there's a, 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 a pagan artifact <laughs> just on my door. Hello? No. I'm already. I. It was. It was this artifact? Question mark. I. I don't know, man. It, it, it's this part of the movie where I'm like, why would you not just run away immediately? Oh, it must yeah, be the neighbors. They seem so friendly around here. It was probably <laughs> just an inquisitive fox. <laughs> I, I bet this was the work of a friend and nothing else. <laughs> hey, Grandpa always said there were friends in these woods, and now I know what he meant. Well, see, now I want your... What he does next. I want your opinion on that. So after that tweet, he says... I didn't think too much of it at the time. I figured it was probably a kid from one of the other houses trying to mess with me, so I took it off the door and tossed it in the fireplace. Oh, God. Why? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. First off, you're contradicting yourself because he's like, yeah, everyone's pretty much gone because of the season, and now he's saying that there's children? (laughs) It's probably one of the random evil children across the lake. (laughs) Well, I don't want their gift, so I'm going to burn it. It, it, Don't! Don't burn the artifact, dude. Rule one. I think we can establish that with all the stuff that we've read and everything so far. Yep. If you ever find something like this, I would say just don't even touch it. Don't mess with it. Ru- like rule one, right? Uh, well, look, here. all I'm saying is every forest that I know, every self-respecting forest has the pagan child, <laughs> right? That runs sure. <laughs> runs through the forest and of leaves course, stuff. Of course, yeah. And, and <laughs> of I, I suppose burning their gifts is, a, you know, an appropriate response. I always just kept them, just like put them up in my house. I thought they were cool, but I don't know. That's just me. Well, and that's because, and you know what, even if, even if you did do that, I think that the pagan evil baby children would respect that more. If they find out that you burnt it, it is going to be hell to pay. Yeah. Yeah, I, th- I think I would so. say also in general. Well, what what you, would you do it, if you were in this scenario? Would you not burn? Oh, would dude, you, I wouldn't you touch just, it. Would you would, just leave? Would, I would be... Uh, I've always I've thought about this. If anything paranormal happens, I'm going to be scared, right? I'm going to be like, oh my god. Like if there's like a, a ghost. Oh, 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 oh god. <laughs> like quivering like that. But I'm going to pretend that I don't even know. Like, oh, just reading my book. Doesn't, ma- hey, doesn't matter. <laughs> Everything's normal here. I wouldn't even. I would act like I don't even see it. Hmm, this is just ran. I okay. My door handle looks more decorative. Today. I w- I wouldn't even acknowledge it. Honestly, that's what I would do. <laughs> I would be so scared. Or honest, I would probably leave. To be co- like, b- there would be no way that I could justify that somebody made something with bones, <laughs> twigs and twine. First off, it's like, where did you find the twigs and twine? Yes, you can find the branches places, but to even go to the store and purchase twine, I don't, <laughs> I don't know that person, and I don't. I, I I would have to be completely disconnected with it. Uh, we got we got to keep continuing. Because let, I'm, let, I'm let's put get... it let's put it this way. Let's put it this way. Right. Let's let's take right. a step back and kind of observe the story so far. This person's a grad student. We'll call him Greg. Greg is a grad student, right? So. He's like, he's going through school, probably doesn't have that much money. Uh, maybe, like, not really a strained relationship with his mom, but not enough that his mom's willing to talk about her father, right? Sure, so, sure. Well, he's probably not that well off. And then he suddenly gifted a house that he could probably sell for like a quarter million, right? Countryside, nice house, stuff like that. Oh, dude, nice, so beautiful piece of property. He can't just walk away from that, right? He has you to ab- do something. Absolutely can. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go on a limb and say, I, I, I yeah, here's, here's something too. And I, I we're, 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 di- we're getting too far off the story, but I want to say this. If I, if a, this is, if a family member, a grandpa of mine that I've never met and has no relationship to me whatsoever gave me property and it's free money. And I'm like, Hey, I, 
where do I sign to sell this is what I would say immediately. I have no personal ties to this, right? And also to assume that you're a grad student and you want to live in the middle of nowhere on a lake? Are you kidding me? Yeah, right, dude. That's all I got to say. Okay. Well, I'm going to be sympathetic for at least... At, he hasn't lost me at this moment. <laughs> at this moment. Okay, all right. He's all lost right. you. And to just, you, he's he's chum. He's shark bait. Here, Who cares? But. He's shark bait. He's shark bait. Wendigoon, because here's the or Isaiah is the, here's the thing Isaiah <laughs> is on your you're like hey it's a really beautiful out here and then you come back <laughs> let's just say it's the third day you've been there and there is a Blair Witch Project artifact on your door it's not even like hey I've lived here for a year I'm settled right that's a different story that's a totally different story he's so Greg is so new to this it's unbelievable unbelievable and then he burns it he's a dunce he's a goon. I don't respect Greg already. We gotta continue. I'm sorry, listener. <laughs> sorry, that's all I got. I, 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 I have nothing. I have nothing but hate in my heart. Okay. Right now. Well, I'm now, sorry. now, out of necessity, I have to be a Greg defender. <laughs> that's fine. Because if we, we both we'll, if we both hate him, this is just gonna be mean. So I've got to yeah, come we, to we, his <laughs> aid. <laughs> you have to bear that cross. I have to bear I'm that sorry. cross. Yeah. Okay. So yes. the guy who rightfully so burned the pagan artifact <laughs> says. Right. By the next morning, I'd pretty much forgotten about it. Okay, he's lost me. <laughs> After that <laughs> sentence, he's lost me. What do you mean you forgot about it? <laughs> well, by the next morning, I didn't think about the children making demonic <laughs> triangles and putting them on my door. No, I no, I can't. I, I can't. No, I can't. Better. I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm. I, bet I have to. I have to stay on his train. I'm Greg Defender. All right, all okay. Right. I, I would forget about it too. I guess. All right. By the next morning, I'd pretty much forgotten about it. And honestly, I had too much on my plate at the moment to worry about some kid's prank. So I got up that morning, made some breakfast, and went out on the deck with some coffee. I was sitting there drinking my coffee when I noticed something hanging in a tree just over the railing. It was another one of those artifacts. Oh, God. <laughs> it was just like the last one, but it had a rock tied to it instead of a bone. Oh, good God. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, they're consciously different and now it's it, it's uh it, it's just another, another it's the same kind of triangle except in the middle of the um bottom twig there's just a rock is all i wanted to say but mm -hmm. there's the exact same size and everything right and then almost immediately i saw another one in a tree further down by the ground i went down the deck steps to retrieve it and then i started seeing even more of them i found about eight in total hanging in trees oh, all around the house and we have various images of these little stick effigies with rocks tied into them. Found about eight in total is crazy. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> Even if it's one guy to consciously make ten of these artifacts in total is it's blowing my mind. Yeah. This is kind of weird. People <laughs> kind of just dropping this around my house Someone's a bit me. strange. <laughs> hmm. We got a bit of an artist and craftsman guy walking, lives around here, okay? <laughs> they all had different objects tied to them. Bones, feathers, that sort of thing. It was definitely weird, but I was more annoyed than anything, thinking that someone was in my yard decorating the trees with these ugly goth Christmas ornaments. Also, if someone was trying to scare me, it was going to take more than some bullshit art and crafts project to do the trick. I gathered all the artifacts together and burned them like the first one. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure that's a good decision. <laughs> I'm sure. Oh God, Greg. Good God. After I disposed of all the stick things, I took a shower, got dressed, and went back outside to do some basic tidying and whatnot. The deck and the yard are sort of overgrown and leaves are starting to fall and cover everything. Being a new homeowner is a lot of work, turns out. That was when I found something that actually did make me nervous. I was raking a corner of the yard when I saw something dark on the ground, off in the trees. I couldn't tell what it was from afar, so I went to investigate. At first I thought it was a blanket, but when I got closer, it looked like a big sweatshirt or a hoodie or something. I didn't want to touch it, but it was obviously clothing of some kind. Oh god. Nope. <laughs> Noob, 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 What? You're afraid of a little navy sweatshirt lying on the ground? You. Well, there's all these demonic. Well, hold on, hold on. Demonic pagan god artifacts, and it's gonna take a lot more to scare me here. And it's just like, oh, a random child sweatshirt on the ground in my yard. That's kind of weird. 
there, there's a lot of questions I have. I do like this build up though so far. If I'm being I, I I will I, like I, I will say uh, it is a bit strange to me that <clears throat> if he if he is operated under the assumption that kids are playing a prank on him, which is reasonable, right? I remember my grandfather, his house that he used to live in, we our family still owned, and it was like completely run down, like ceiling falling through and stuff. So sure, we went sure. to go check it out, and it turns out a bunch of kids were using it for like a hangout spot. Um, like there was, you know, beer cans in the floor and stuff like that. Cause it was like, mm. it was a pretty big old, like opulent looking house. That's now just abandoned on some back road. Uh, and while we were walking around in there, a bunch of people had like drawn like six, six, six on the wall and like scary sure. faces and stuff like that. So I get to some degree, you inherit an abandoned house and now there's these little creepy twigs hanging up around the place. But if you are operating under that assumption, why then does a shirt freak you out because you would assume the people who are leaving this stuff up wear clothes right so maybe someone left a jacket on the ground like well there's I, a question i, I have too here as well is is he saying that the first time he's been at this place he's like oh i'm finding these weird artifacts around or i thought that he was like oh i live here and i woke up one day and oh there was a weird artifact on the door and around my house are we to assume that he, the first day he's showing up he's like oh it's a nice property but when i inspected the house these things are here I think I think that's what the friend. Well, he says he went back. He went out to town, and he comes back, mean, and dude. the stick thing's there. Yeah, so it, it implies that it was between the time of him first getting there and him coming back the next morning. He finds the stick thing there. Now, hold on. This could also imply maybe he just didn't notice it the first day, the one on the door, and the others were hung up in the trees around. Or if this is a place kids are still making pranks on, like, they don't, if the house still looks overgrown, maybe they don't know someone's moved in yet. My point is, I can almost rationalize, because I'm trying to be a Greg defender, I can almost rationalize getting over the stick things, but I don't know then why the sweatshirt would freak you out, is all I'm saying. Yeah, no, I think that's fair. I think, um, hmm. It's interesting. I don't know. Also, just clothes being abandoned, like someone just like took something off or left something is always just kind of odd. But let's just, yeah, I guess yeah, let's yeah. keep rolling. Yeah, we'll continue. After that, he says, I looked around and realized it was a whole encampment. Oh, okay. Well, that kind of explains why he'd be freaked out <laughs> by a sweatshirt. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I walk it back. I walk it back. This would be freaky. <laughs> there were a couple of old socks, a pair of what I think was underwear. Gross. A few old napkins scattered around, a plastic spoon, and creepiest of all, a beat-up notebook. To which we have pictures of all of those things lying in the dirt. I flipped open the notebook, but nothing was written inside. A whole bunch of pages had been ripped out of it, so I know someone had been using it. Plus, you could sort of see the shadow of pin marks on the most recent page. I couldn't make out what had been written, though. Anyway, that definitely freaked me out. It was clear someone was camping out on my property and possibly trying to scare me out of the house. I wasn't really sure what to do about it, though. What could I do? Definitely didn't sleep well that night. That was the day before yesterday. The next morning, I sort of expected more weird artifacts to be outside, but I didn't see anything. And the encampment was gone, so I figured it was probably a homeless person passing through or something. And with that, we have the end of the first thread. Yeah, the end of October 29th thread, which is... uh. Pretty, I mean, pretty alarming first day. So basically, what, just to go back, he found artifacts, clothes, kind of an encampment, a journal that looked like somebody was had been writing in it, but the pages have been torn out. And he's thinking that people are basically pulling a prank on him. Yes. Yeah. Or, or like it's a homeless guy who was just like hanging out near an old abandoned house, which again, makes sense. Uh, like I said, that house that my grandfather's house we went and checked out we saw signs that looked like some guy was living in there for a while like you know food and like a cot he made in the corner um right like, i mean so like you know people need a place to stay they go somewhere that's got an old abandoned house makes sense um but it, it would be enough to make me freaked out i wouldn't immediately jump to supernatural conclusions basically yeah no not yet and it looks like the next thread starts on october 31st 2018 the, the, the next main thread does but if you scroll up a bit in between there's some quick replies he gives to the events that just happened so it looks like he there was a response to the thread on october 29th that says the driveway ends ways up from a, a the driveway ends a ways up from the house and then you have to trek down a path which bends around the side of the house to get in i was walking around the house when i saw some movement across the yard uh across the yard near a tree I froze dead in my tracks. 
Someone was standing under a tree staring at my house. They didn't see me though, since I was also partly behind some trees and a good distance away. Whoever it was, they were wearing the same dark hoodie I'd seen in the grass the day before. As quietly as I could, I set down my shopping bags next to me and slipped my phone out of my pocket. I managed to take a couple photos, but the person turned and disappeared into the woods. Here in the image, you zoom in, you can see who that person is, which looks like a lovely little fellow. <laughs> I don't I don't care for this man. I don't care for this, this man. This, it's Voldemort. <laughs> yeah, so for audio listeners, it's basically like they kind of have like clean features, like no facial hair or anything. Kind of feminine looking in the face almost, but it's hard oh. to tell because they're wearing like an oversized hoodie with the hood down and they're just standing oh. in the trees. And then it has a moment where it's just standing, and then it quickly looks at the uh, the ca Greg, and then Greg's like, "Oh!" And then oh, oh, you're you're around. down you're down at the video. Oh, I, I, oh shit! I, I'm on the wrong one. I'm on the wrong one. Sorry. Yeah, right. We're not there yet. <laughs> That's coming in just a second. It's still, okay, so okay, sorry, Kate. I'm so sorry, Kate. Um, <laughs> him standing like a dark wizard in, bro especially broad daylight, mind you. Yeah, is crazy. It's great. <laughs> Oh God! Imagine. Wait. It's okay. So. Okay. So I will say the sweatshirt the guy is wearing is not the same as the one that was on the ground. You don't think so? I will say that. I don't think so because the one on the ground looked like it was blue. This is definitely like a black. I mean, yeah, it could kind of be robe. dark in the trees, I guess. But yeah, maybe. Oh, so you're you you think it is his? I think uh, I think it could be the same one. Oh, yeah, okay. just a right, shadow right. and stuff. Because it makes all sense right. if that was the person standing outside, they picked up a hoodie. That they left on the ground and now they're wearing it standing out in the trees. Sure, sure. I mean, I, I agree. I just didn't know. I, I didn't. I, I'm assuming there might be more is what I was trying to say. Oh, that's a good point. It could be. Very well could be. I don't know. I, I, don't, I'm, let's, I, let's, I, I honestly do not remember enough details about the story to know if that's correct or not. So you could be right. <laughs> As always, I am lost. I am deeply, <laughs> deeply lost. Well, don't, don't, worry, don't worry. I'll make it worse in just a moment. So. <laughs> oh, good. With the next tweet, he says, I stood there for a couple minutes too nervous to move in case the person came back. But they didn't, so I picked up my bags and hurried inside. I picked up the phone to call the cops, but put it back down because I didn't even know what I'd tell them. Someone was looking at my house, like any police officer would take me seriously. And like an idiot, I destroyed all the weird artifacts from before, so there wouldn't even be any evidence. Oh, God, Greg. <laughs> that's, what I'm, that's what I'm saying. Why? Why would your first thing be like, I'm just going to burn it? You know, it's just, it's, ugh. Burning, burning's a bit extreme. I can see throwing away, perhaps setting Thro throwing, inside. Throwing away, or even just throwing them on the ground being like, okay. Like, if they're hanging the burning, on the door, The just, burning like, seems a bit much. Yard, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's insane. Like, I'm going to start a fire and burn them. <laughs> I absolutely right. hate these. <laughs> oh, I do not like these. Um... So it, yeah, yeah, yeah. So after that, okay. I was mad at myself and feeling scared all alone in the house. So I locked all the doors and left out the back. I went down to the lake because I didn't know where else to go. I just knew I didn't want to be in the house at that moment. I walked a ways down to the lake. I walked a ways down to the lake shore, then sat for a while looking out at the water. I thought about getting in my car and just going home, but I felt like that would get me in trouble. There's all sorts of property tax stuff I don't understand. I felt trapped. Okay, you can you can leave. <laughs> you can you can leave the house and still play, pay pay property leave. taxes what, what if that's are you your issue. About? Yeah, yeah. Right. Are, what, are you? Uh, you know what though? If anything, if anything, <laughs> it's like a, I, he he is predominantly young, right? Like a yeah. college grad. So he could be like, I mean, I don't know what's going. on. I mean, I guess. I, do the property tax, am I allowed to leave if I owe money on the place? That, just, that feels outlandishly stupid to me. That feels like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I feel like that would be, get me in trouble. There's all sorts of property tax stuff. I don't understand. I felt trapped. Okay, Greg. Okay. <laughs> sure, Greg. Right. Whatever you say. Sure, Greg. It does. Whatever. It is getting across the idea that Greg's kind of dumb. Uh, yeah. Well, he's burnt pagan artifacts and now he feels he can't leave his house because he owes property okay back. a lot of dumb not kind of dumb <laughs> He's yeah, 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 dumb yeah. yeah yeah i'm i'm okay with the himbo protagonist from time to time <laughs> just just a fool <laughs> in a dangerous situation oh god all right so after that he says also i couldn't decide if i was actually in any danger 
When my grandpa died, it took me a couple months to actually get up to the house, so maybe someone was squatting in the empty house? Now that I'm here, they might just leave on their own accord. I was starting to get dark, so I reluctantly headed back to the house. I walked up the stairs leading to the back of my house, but right before going inside, I got this weird chill. I made up my mind that I absolutely did not want to stay in that house overnight. I decided to go get my car and drive into town to find a motel for the night. This is the first smart decision he's made, by the way. Yeah, I, I was calling my accountant and I made the decision to go to the motel because the property tax issue was not an issue after all. Yeah, yeah it turns out I won't get arrested for not being in a house for a night. <laughs> yeah, he pulls out the driveway and there's like cops waiting for him. Where are you going, Greg? <laughs> you think you can just leave at a property you pay taxes for? Sorry, I'll go back. Tell it to the judge. Get in the car. Tell it to the judge, Greg. <laughs> the house was all locked up and I already had my keys, so I went back around the house and toward the path that led to the driveway. And that's when I saw her. The mm. figure from before, standing right in the middle of my front lawn, staring straight at my house. I froze in place, completely in shock. I was practically right next to her, but it was almost as if she didn't see me. Then it hit me. She couldn't see me because she had no eyes. She has oh. no eyes. Just shiny skin over where her eyes should be. And she had almost no hair at all. I wanted to run, but I felt like if I moved even a little, she'd hear me. As quietly as I could, I went for my phone. I needed some sort of evidence to show the cops. It all felt like it was happening in slow motion. I feel sick to my stomach as I'm writing this, but I was able to get it on video. My heart is racing just, just thinking about this. I haven't been able to watch it since I recorded it, but here it is. And then we oh. have the video, which is God. very, it, if I may say, very well done for what this story's doing so far, right? Like... <laughs> for those who aren't uh able to watch we have this this figure from before with the hood down like appears to be a woman but their skin grown over where the eyes should be and it's facing straight ahead and then suddenly turns towards greg and then greg flips out like uh gra moves the camera and runs away it's just uncanny enough to to be realistic like something where it's it's later at night i also want to say that the idea of a horror element or horror story of hey i inherited this house that's been kind of abandoned and now you are feuding with a squatter like a homeless squatter is uh -huh. terrifying yeah like yeah. that within it's like somebody who's like no this is my like some kind of weird territorial issue with somebody who's probably mentally unwell like uh, you know homeless whatever that within itself is drives you up the wall but then to add this little bit of uncanny element of like the eyes that are kind of sheened over which also you could debate which the video even in the video it's it's hard to see it's kind of night but it's it, it's the description they give of no eyes light hair and it's just staring at the house and now I, all i'm wondering is what is inside the house that this person is so fixated by yeah yeah I, and also like for just like a twitter arg the effect of the skin over the eyes is very well done like it, yeah. again usually it's, we it's complemented by the darkness the night and everything of course but it does give the impression of it's like burn marks over their eyes it looks really good i was gonna say that too almost like a burn victim of yeah. some kind yeah. like yeah i was gonna say and i will say that i'm usually not a fan of whenever it's like oh they don't have eyes like I, you see that so much in horror stories and like even like cryptid stuff of like they don't have eyes but they do this i think this is a really effective way of doing that like i'm, I'm really i'm bought in right now yeah yeah, I think it's really cool. So after that video, Greg continues and says, I ran back around the house and got inside. I scrambled upstairs and looked out my bedroom window at the front yard. And she had vanished. Remembering it now, it feels like it didn't really happen. Like it was a nightmare or something. I called the cops and explained what had happened. I'm sure I sounded crazy, but they said they'd send someone by in the morning and to keep my doors locked. So that's where I am now, alone in the woods, freaking out. I know I won't be able to sleep tonight, I feel lightheaded and nauseous. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm scared shitless. And with good reason. Interesting. <laughs> this this later half is written really well, very believable. Like very it's very believable of someone just being like, 
I'm horrified. I don't know what to, and they're kind of, it's almost like they're dumping all of their thoughts and the, like the encounters they had into just social media. As if also, I, it's believable that you would put this on social media. So people would be like, dude, you're freaking out. Like, it's fine. You know, and you can like get reassurance from people. Yeah. But man, with that video and like some of this other stuff happening, I feel like it would be the worst idea as well. Cause I feel like people would be like, you need to run. You need to like, you're in danger. Call, go, you know, ask for help. Do whatever you can. <laughs> Cause it, it, it's, it, it's insane. Yep. Yep. It absolutely is. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and that was all, and that's all October 29th. That's all that document of that day, correct? Yes, yes, that's all from the, the first series of reports. Yeah, it started with something weird's happening in the woods in my house. Hey everyone, we wanted to take a quick break to thank today's sponsor, which is HelloFresh. Whether you're trying to save money, eat better, live a stress free life, HelloFresh is here to help. America's number one meal kit is ready to bring you your most delicious year. With over 45 meals to choose from, you can ditch the meal planning blues and get right to the best part, eating. Packed with fresh ingredients, everything arrives pre-portioned and right to your doorstep. That's chef-crafted meals for a fraction of the price and no guesswork. Lately, I've been wanting to cook more in my house. You know, all the DoorDash bullshit, I hate it. And their quick and easy meals make it easy to do. In 20 minutes, I can have a full meal prepared without worrying about running to the store or measuring out ingredients it's been so nice, I love it. You know, I'm just, I'm a simple man, okay? HelloFresh helps keep your life moving, and right now, when you sign up, you get a free dessert for life! So give HelloFresh a try, click the link in the description, or use our code and get 16 free meals plus free dessert for life while your subscription is active. Thank you so much, HelloFresh, for sponsoring the channel, and hey, let's get back to the story. And then the next thread begins, I think I found the easier way to read these is just go up to like the first tweet that shows show Where more the replies. Last yes, yeah. Yep. And start so there. The, the, so on October 31st, uh, two days later, 626 yeah, we PM, get the next yes, thread. It, it's the, the past couple days, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So now we're on Halloween day. It's been two days now, and this is his first update since then. Yep. So next okay. we have, uh, again, on Halloween, he says, the past couple days have been really strange. Also have shitty reception up here, so I'm sorry for not updating. They sent a police officer up yesterday morning, but I feel like it didn't accomplish anything. I explained everything to the cop and even took him out to the clearing where I found the stuff, but it was all gone except for the notebook. And since the notebook is empty, it was basically useless. I feel like the cop didn't believe me anyway. I showed him the photos I took of the stick things, and he said at worst it counted as vandalism. But without physical evidence of trespassing, they couldn't do anything. Even when I showed him the video, he still acted really skeptical. <laughs> hey, officer, here's the no-eyed lady <laughs> in my yard. Well, can, yeah. What's, can you go what's, arrest her? What, what's weird? Ex well, I mean, I would be probably doing the same thing. But <laughs> imagine showing somebody like, dude, check. This was outside my house. And the guy's like, yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I listen to Creepcast. I know what this is. It's one of those ARGs, yeah, like, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, this is one of those ARG. Okay, good luck, sir. <laughs> he kept asking if I knew the person in the video. I think he thought I was pranking him or something. I ended up just getting frustrated. The cops said to call the station if something happened. After he left, I went back and got the notebook from the clearing. Maybe there's a way to figure out what was written on the last page? I don't know. Anyway, the cop drove away and I was alone again. It's so damn quiet up here. All I want to do is leave, but I feel like I can't. I'm so far away from home that I can't even invite a friend up here to keep me company. And even if someone did come, it would take them a couple days. I haven't seen the woman from before, but I feel like she's still out there. And other weird things are happening too. I took a walk around the lake yesterday because I wanted to get a look at the house, uh, to get a look at the other houses in the area, maybe see if someone else has noticed anything weird. But they're all empty. Every house is totally dark and there are no cars in any of the driveways. I haven't seen Ugh. a single person at all, except once. Well, sort of. After I came back from my walk, I was out on the deck and saw a boat in the water, way off in the distance. They weren't moving. They stayed there all afternoon. I feel like they were... They were watching me. Oh. And we that have, visual, too. Yeah. For our audio listeners, it's a... It's a 
I love this. I love this, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's good. The photo is so good. It's like a big, wide open lake, and there's just like a very small boat with two figures. It's like you can't identify. Even if you zoomed in on it, it'd be pixelated. Yeah. But it's just, it's very unsettling. Also, the idea, too, that he walks around, like Greg's been walking around. He's like, yeah, all of these houses are totally empty. Yeah. No one is here. No one at all is, is horrifying. Which also, I don't know about you, I'm, I'm being a little presumptuous too, but with how disregarding the officer was, I don't know, man. I think there's some kind of, I I, I, I feel like they're in on it as well. Like, especially after the Baraska incident, I can't trust the cops in these stories. But especially if there's nobody else around and then you're like, hey, someone is here and I have video proof and they're like, hmm. Yeah, I mean, if something weird happens, just call us. That feels a bit suspicious. Yeah, to me. it's a bit strange, admittedly. Mm -hmm. um, I'll also make the note that it's funny you're still traumatized from Barasco. That makes me happy. <laughs> everybody is, dude. Yeah, everybody, yeah, everybody yeah, is. yeah. Anytime someone, every time someone like reacts to something, they're just like. Well, at least it's no Barasco. That kind of thing. Yeah, every I time. Saw, I saw a bunch of tweets that were like, uh, if I ever think my friends are bad, I'll just remember they didn't traumatize me like I say it to <laughs> Taunter. I know, dude. It's bullshit. Yeah. Never, yeah. never forgive you for that, dude. Never <laughs> yeah, forgive you that's, for that. that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> I, I wouldn't change anything, though. I'm glad it happened, but that's fair. <laughs> um, so after the picture of the boat, Greg says... They actually stayed out there in the same place until it got too dark to see them anymore. Normally, I'd think they were just fishing, if it weren't for what happened the day before. And the fact that all these houses seem empty, where did they come from? Mm. The boat was gone this morning, so who knows. I microwaved some oatmeal for breakfast and took it down to the dock near the water. It's weird, but I sort of feel safer down there. The water makes me feel less stressed, I guess. I kind of feel like time goes by faster when I'm by the lake. It's like meditative or whatever. Anyway, I was actually starting to feel a little better about everything this morning if it wasn't for what happened next. I'd finished my oatmeal and I was stare and I was starting back towards the house when I noticed something in the water. It was in this little inlet by the shore. It was small and white, and at first I thought it was a brightly colored rock, but I wasn't sure. It seemed too round. So again, there's an image. We see a small little white dot in what looks like, you know, an inlet of a lake. Yeah, it, it's a very, it's just a picture as if someone's like sitting by water and they're pointing their phone down. And it almost looks like a, like a white marble or pearl or even like maybe like a fishing bob. Uh-huh. Kind of tucked away in the rocks, maybe. Yep. And then he continues and says, probably against my better judgment, I took off my shoes and went into the water to retrieve it. It was an eyeball. An eyeball. Oh, God. <laughs> and then we have an image God. of him holding a human eye in his hand. It's a human eyeball in the hand, but it has like a cataract over it. Like a, It's definitely like a, almost like an old person's eye. Or it, it could have been because it's in the water, but bro literally just picked up an eyeball <laughs> and, and posed with it to take a picture of his hand. I don't, uh, Greg, you are your character. <laughs> I will say, um, as a slight nitpick as someone who's seen a lot of pictures of dead bodies, um, which I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but the, that, that's not how eyes look when they're decomposing. They just get kind of white and like jelly looking. Um, and also that eyeball is like red. So whoever had this had like red or pink eyes, like albino eyes. Um, yeah, I mean, there's still a lot of blood in it and stuff. I mean, it, to, to be completely transparent, it kind of looks like a, like a like a ping pong ball. Yeah, like a toy, like a, like a toy eyeball. I'm right. I'm being a jerk because it's a re it's a we're, very cool set for the story. I'm just being we're we're we're, pedantic, we're nitpicking, yeah. but it's just it, it's all about immersive right now. It's, it's the immersion right now, especially with how good the the woman uh, standing there and then quickly. Yeah, that that that, that well more than done. makes up for it. It's very well done. Very creepy. Yeah. Yeah. So just just a little note. You know, show it on the screen. Correct. Looks like a little, you know, little toy. This has to be from an animal, right? Please tell me this is from a big fish or something. I threw it back in the water and hustled back up to the house. I washed Why? my Why? Mm. Why? Oh, stop. Yeah, Why? yeah. If he's trying to keep you evidence. Find an eyeball. Yeah. You find an eyeball in the water and you're like, eh, okay, well, I'll just throw it back in the Call the cop! I mean, like, it's it, something weird yeah. happened. If it was like he thought. 
Like, if he was like, oh, this is definitely like an animal's eye, like a deer or fish or whatever, then sure. But, I mean, like, it's he doesn't think it is, I don't think. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. I Keep guess. the eyeball. A perfectly, a perfectly preserved one single eyeball <laughs> right there. Well, you, wait, sure. Let's just uh, let's say he thinks it's an animal, right? I mean, he says that there it has to be an animal, right? Whatever from big fish. So he's like, whatever. Throws it back. Sure. He continues. Says, I washed my hands in the sink and then sat on the couch for a long time. I don't know what's going on. I can't believe I picked that up out of the water. I feel gross. And to make matters worse, that boat's back out there. It showed up again this afternoon and it's just sitting there in the same place as yesterday. Are they watching me from the boat? And that's the end of the initial thread from October 31st here, yes. it looks like. And the um, what's interesting is now we have two accounts of people staring and looking at the house. We don't know if it's directly at him, but I have a feeling that we are going to find out that something in the house is obviously grabbing these people to want to, I'm assuming... Um, they're, they're fixated on something. I, I don't know. Like, I, I, I think we, we haven't heard the end of Greg's grandpa. I'm still wondering where that ties into this as well. Yep. Yep. It's it. I assure you it gets worse. I know that much. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling it does. It yes. gets more terrified as it goes on. So the next thread begins with, I keep hearing things at night. Beginning with the November 6th thread, Greg says, I keep hearing things at night. I stand out on the deck and I feel like I can hear things moving through the trees. It's probably just deer or something, but I can't help imagining it's something else. I'm sure I'm making it out to be worse than it is. Are deer nocturnal? I see them out on the road sometimes when I'm driving into town. I try not to think about it. But last night it was worse. I heard... Screams? That sounds so stupid to say, but I don't know what else to call it. I was brushing my teeth and heard something out the bathroom window. I'm sure it was an animal, but my toothbrush was buzzing, so I can't be sure. And then this morning, I found the bloody remains of something right in the middle of my yard. It was literal intestines, and they were fresh. I feel like I can't even post something like that to Twitter. Like, is it going to get flagged if I post it? I don't know what to do. Maybe I can upload it separately and share the link or something. Fair warning, this is pretty gross, so don't look at it if you're squeamish. I'm sure it's an animal, but what did this? And why was it left right in the front of my house? And then there's an attached link for... Ah, uh, the image is gone now. Dang, that sucks. Okay, maybe I could search and find it later, but it looks like for the moment it's lost media. That is tragic. Yeah, I'm. A, yeah, it, 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 I, I wonder. Do you think it was ever there, or do you think that it, uh, he uploaded it and it's like a missing piece of media? Like even there, got. Oh, that's a good point. Like maybe there never was an image. Maybe it was always just yeah. like redacted. Yeah, it could be. Very right. well, could be. If we don't put anything else, uh, if we don't put anything up, assume we were right. So. <laughs> yeah. All right. So on to the next one. Yeah, sorry, it's disgusting. Anyway, I scooped it up with the shovel and flung them into the woods a ways away from the house. I don't know if bears are up here, but I couldn't leave it. And besides, animal guts are the least of my worries right now. I have other things on my mind. I've been trying to figure out what's written in this notebook from the woods. I've had it for a couple days, and I can, and I can see faint letters, but I can't make them out. A bunch of people replied and told me to do a pencil or charcoal rubbing, but I didn't have anything like that. I found a bunch of pins, but no pencils, so I had to go back into town. It was actually really hard to find charcoal. I finally had some luck at this little hardware store. The box didn't even have a price tag on it, so I feel like it had been sitting on the shelf for years. It seems like people in town are starting to recognize me. I don't like it. I didn't plan to be here that long, but it looks like I might not have a choice. People are nice enough, but it seems like the kind of town where everyone knows everyone, and I definitely don't belong. When I was in the hardware store, these little kids were following me around, giggling and making fun of me. I think they were twins. I couldn't really hear what they were saying, but I'm sure they were making fun of me because little kids are jerks. For one, if you're being haunted by, like, creepy twins in a small town, you should probably leave. <laughs> that or if, if you've been, yeah, if you're sitting there and you've had all these things happen, and in, in any capacity, there's little twins that are following you around, poking and prodding you in a store. Not a good sign. Absol Never yeah, a good sign. Get out. Absolutely not. Twins are already an anomaly, so it's just like, it's just another negative on top of a negative. Yep, absolutely not. 
On the way out of town, I stopped at the grocery store, but they were out of some of the things I wanted. It seems like they're always out of stuff. They've been out of eggs for a couple days, so I just got some Pop-Tarts and stuff and left. Anyway, the notebook. I've actually been putting it off for most of the afternoon because I wasn't sure I wanted to find out what the woman was writing in it. I can't ignore it forever. I'm going to eat dinner and then I guess I'll try the charcoal. Be back in a bit. God. So I did a charcoal rubbing over the most recent page in the book. Like people were telling me to. I'm not sure what I was expecting, but it wasn't this. I'm sort of freaking out. And then would you like to read what the notebook says? Yeah, the image here is trying to make out what the image is. I'm trying to see. It says, let me see here. It looks like it's just saying, they took my eyes. Basically, it's, it looks like she ju is just repeating over and over again, they took my eyes, correct? Yep. Over yep. and over and over and over again uh, on the paper. If you zoom in, yeah, it says, they took my eyes, they took my eyes, they took my eyes, they took my eyes. It's very... Um, horrific you know uh i don't know any other way to say it uh i am upset that i had to read like this uh the, the page the way the way too with the charcoal is just fairly dirty like it's it's a very cool way to reveal this message because it just looks like uh i don't know kind of like ash or something like the page is kind of burnt so it's like this cryptic burnt message just like coming out of this paper and the woman was as like very hard, especially to get those imprints on the next page. The person has to write kind of heavy. Yeah. So it's this person that just kind of writes, they took my eyes, they took my eyes over and over again. Yep. <laughs> Definitely a pleasant and, thought. And, then, and Greg just ends the thread here, just says, what even is this? What the fuck? I feel like I'm going to throw up. I need to go sit down. What the hell is going on? Well, Greg, let me tell you what's going on. <laughs> You're in you're in shit water. You're in deep, buddy. <laughs> there's no there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Sorry to be the inquisitive little man here, but let me tell you, Greg, this is not a typical and normal thing going on. What the heck is happening? Well, Greg, you're being fucking haunted. I don't know what this is about. <laughs> All right? You're 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 in you're up shit creek for sure right now. I feel bad for Greg. I feel bad for Greg, but at the same time, I, I don't like you should have left the first day, dude. The first little sign. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, as soon as, uh, realistically, as soon as that effigy was on his doorknob, he should have been like, well, I'm staying at a Motel 8 tonight. Yeah, and that would have solved all of this. As soon as a pagan artifact is found, and Greg's like, well, what the heck is, what the heck exactly is all this stuff? Oh, now, how okay, did well, this gonna... get here? Yeah. All right, well, I guess I'll make a fire and burn all of it. Should probably, <laughs> That's normal. Should, should probably burn this thing I don't understand. Yeah. Well, I don't understand it, so I'm going to burn it. <laughs> that makes the most sense to me. And that's the end of that thread on November 6th, I believe. And we don't pick back up until November 9th, so it's been three days. Yep. So it, it seems like uh, it, the, the standard for these updates has, has been basically every couple days he kind of seems to update some stuff. Yeah, yeah. The next one begins with I called my mom yesterday. Yeah. So... On November the 9th, he says, I called my mom yesterday. I wanted to see if she knew anything about this place. She said I've actually been here before when I was really young. I don't remember any of that. I tried to ask her again why she never got along mm. with my grandfather, but she's so cagey about it. She grew up in a town nearby, and my grandfather didn't move into this house until after my mom left for school. I guess she never really came back. I want to say, too, that that's a really interesting little plug-in. I just want to say just that... Uh... I love the line of, you know, um, she said I'd actually been here before uh, when I was really young. I don't remember any of that. And then you kind of follow that up immediately with, like, uh, she was really cagey about talking about her dad. Yeah. Seems like some kind of weird, like, hey, Grandpa might be a Satanist. Grandpa might be yeah. a Yeah, you know what it actually, it, I don't, it, this isn't where the story's going, but it reminds me almost of, like, an abuse scenario. You know, a little bit. Sure. Of like, yeah. Like, oh, you've yeah, been there you, before, but I don't. Yeah. You don't need to talk about grandpa. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. You. You. Uh, some kind of crazy dark thing happened, and your mind just tries to bury it. How kind of wild would it be to be in a house, and then you're like, oh, you've been here before, and you have zero I memory of it? Oh, oh that's. I that. Oh, I hate creepy. that in my own real life. I remember, I, like, I, I visit. I, I remember I, I visited one of my grandparents one time, and my grandpa was, or my dad was like. Yeah, you came here when you were three. And it's like, oh, what? I don't remember. <laughs> it's already kind of like it's disturbing in its own right. Not yeah, that it's like, you know, yeah. anything tragic, but it's just one of those things where it's like, oh, really? I've been to this. I, you can't. It, it, I don't know. It's like a weird. It feels weird that your brain isn't doing its job, right? That it's not exactly. putting together the yeah. pieces. 
The weird Your own mind betrayed the, you. The weirdest one I ever had that when I was like five years old. So like, we lived right down the street from like my grandparents, my dad's mm -hmm. uh, mom and uh, dad. So I would like like as a baby a toddler and stuff like that they would like watch over me while my parents were at work i spent like the first years of my life with them and then one day for seemingly no reason at all i was like four or five my parents mm. take me over there it had been maybe a week since i seen my grandparents and i looked at them and didn't know who they were and got scared and ran away that is like I had, I had seen them a week ago, but for some yeah. reason, my brain had just started collecting data of what people look like and who people were. So my, when my dad's like, you're going to be staying with Mamo for a, for a couple hours, I, I bolted. I ran away. I was like, I've never met these people before. And then like, it was sad because I go back to my grandparents and my grandpa's like, you don't remember me? <laughs> it's like, yeah, I was going to say, yeah. I was say if, I was, if I was your grandparent, I'm not going to lie, I'd be really pissed. I'd be like, okay, dude, fuck this kid. My grand, my, my <laughs> grand <laughs> doesn't remember me? Come my, on. Yeah, my grandpa was like, oh, you don't remember me? And then he like turned on Dragon Tales or something and gave me a root beer. And I was like, okay. <laughs> all right, yo. All right, yo. <laughs> all right, yo, old man, old man's pretty chill. Yeah, though. you're cool. You're cool. Why, why he chill like right, that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I yeah, take yeah, it yeah. back. But yeah, it's <laughs> weird. It's like all of a sudden my brain's like, oh, I should start remembering what faces look like, and uh, uh, it, it, it weirds me out to think about. But yeah, strange encounter. Yeah. So uh, I guess she never came back. We talked for a little bit, but my reception here is spotty. She asked me if there's still wine in the cellar, and I told her there wasn't a cellar, but she said there is. Down in the basement, off to a corner. After she hung up, I went downstairs to look. She was right. There's a bunch of old antique stuff in the basement, and behind some filing cabinets, there's a dusty little wine cellar. I can't believe I missed it at first. It's full of wine, and some of it is really old. Then we have various pictures of an old dusty wine cellar. Dusty we, wine we have cellar. A, a the barrel creepiest of something. Crest. Yeah, there's like a crest on the wall. Yeah, there's a crest there's with brick. like a bird. What is that? A bird and a rabbit, it looks like, or something. Yeah, creepy old, and then the next thread he shows, like, some old wine uh, toppers, basically, that look more haunting than anything I've seen in my whole life. <laughs> like weird little it's, baby man with a top hat and all kind of, like, a weird dying beagle or something. It's got, like, carved faces and stuff like that, yeah. Yeah, these oh, are the kind of nice. things it, my wife would collect and put around the house, yeah. yeah and then... Uh, the next thread here, the next picture he's showing is basically a dead rat. And he's like, eh, looks like no one's been down here in a while. It's like, yeah, Greg. Yeah. yeah it's the... a mummified mouse, basically. <laughs> yeah, it's a dead rat. That's a pretty dead rat. That thing's been down there a while, yeah. I mean, he's right. It has been down there a while. Um, after that, he says, and look at some of these bottles. I don't know anything about wine. I wonder if they're good. Anyway, at least I have a surplus of alcohol down here to take my mind off how weird things have been lately. There is a bottle that's labeled 1864. <laughs> 1864, the other one's 1934. I mean, like, obviously, I'm not, I don't know anything about, I just know that that's probably extremely rare and extremely old. So it, it, it's yeah. aging the basement even more, I guess is what it's yeah, trying yeah. to do. Or the collection the, or these people. This place but. has been here a while. Yeah. Sure. This house keeps surprising me. I keep finding weird shit around the property. Like, there's a collapsed shed in the backyard. A little ways through the trees. It's not that strange, I guess, but I can't help overthinking everything I see now. And we see, like, again, a collapsed shed. Like, what looks like old rusted barrels, a window pane. What looks like the pieces of an old lawnmower, I think. That's, like, been out in the weather for 30 years. Right. And then an old street sign that says Bermuda. Yeah. Is what I'm seeing here. Yep. So, and then after that, he says, a little ways away from the shed, I found this in the middle of a clearing. What is this? And we have a little Easter bunny looking thing. That's like, I mean, at yeah. one point it was an Easter bunny. Now it's like vines grown over it. It looks decayed and like paint chipped mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But at one point it was right. like a little cute bunny decoration. Yeah. Like almost like a yard gnome oh, looking thing. Oh, my, my wife opened the door. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you like want to come say hi to everyone after that heart attack it was gonna be in the episode <laughs> oh it's just hunter i'm talking to now oh my gosh oh say hi hunter hello that was very very funny 
All right, sorry about that. Anyway, gosh, it sent me because she, I didn't hear anything. Then she throws the door open like it's time. Hello? Like, <laughs> gosh. <laughs> yeah, Easter Bunny. <laughs> then it says, none of it makes sense. And there's something else I found that I can't stop thinking about. There's so much junk around the house and I'm trying to clean it up. Partly because it'll help this place sell faster, but also to keep my mind off things. I was sorting through some debris and found these old rusty letters in a pile on the ground, partly under the foundation. I could see some nail holes on the side of the house, so I think they were on the house at one point. I know sometimes people give lake houses names. I can't figure out what they might have said, though. I brought them inside and laid them all out on the kitchen floor to see if I could make sense of them. No luck so far. Maybe someone else can figure it out. And then we have super interesting because the, the last letters. photo here is, yeah, it's just a series of letters. Uh, just to quickly go through them, it's A L E W D P H A T E C E R P E, and they're all very rusty on basically kitchen tile flooring kind of thing. It's just a little snapshot of it. Uh, and I just want to say, based off of what I have had happen so far, is that this, you know, I first naming a lake house okay i don't know what kind of delusion you're in dude i don't i've never <laughs> have you heard of that before yeah people I've heard do, people naming boats people do that around like, here they'll be they'll call it like uh um uh crow like the cranes landing or they'll say like um the okay. the honey hole or the hideaway or something like that but normally that's like I, I haven't heard of like nailing letters to the side of the house, especially around Gatlinburg. That's super popular. All the cabins will be named like the three bears nook or the, you know, the, the hideaway or okay. something like that. So I it's not totally so, unheard okay. of, but so if it's, if it's it, okay. So then it's in the realm of it's in, it's in a real, like a, a realm that is like a it's, reality. It's, nor it's, 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 it's in reality. It's normally with like places you rent. Like Airbnbs and stuff like that type thing. Like that but, I could see where it's yeah. like, oh, a cozy thing. We went there and it was called, yeah, like the Bear's Cavern or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, stuff oh, okay, like whatever. That. This, though, with how rusty it is and everything else, it, I I feel like it's going to spell something that's like not even ink, like Latin or something. <laughs> yeah. Like, what exactly is this? And then he's going to look at it and it's going to mean like the the devil's whore. <laughs> like, oh, oh, God. Oh, God. It's, it spells out like if uh, don't go in the house you'll die. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you stay in the house you will be killed. And he's like, look, uh oh, oh jeez. Um, it looks like here too that that's the end of November 9th. and then uh, the next entry is it until November twenty first. Yep, yep. The next. So this is, this is a big this is a bigger jump here. Yes, yeah. So it's what she uh, addresses because on November twenty first, twenty eighteen. The first uh, note he has says, sorry for not updating in a while. The reception up here is terrible and I haven't been able to get Twitter to load all that often. At least there's lots of wine in the cellar, so I haven't been too bored. And that's the first thing he says as far as that goes. So he's just he's just getting hammered. <laughs> yeah, he's become, slowly becoming an alcoholic out there on the lake. Yeah, I mean, I mean, hairless, <laughs> eyeless women and dudes on boats watch him. Yeah, <laughs> like a true I found American. Someone's I found someone's entire spine and nervous system in my bush. <laughs> oh, well. I don't know. At least I have wine. <laughs> uh, so after that, he says, I've mostly been trying to keep busy getting the house in shape to sell. A realtor is supposed to come up here next week to help me formally list it, which is good because I'd like to get out of here. But there's something weird about the town down the road that I can't figure out. I've been getting cabin fever pretty bad, so the other day I drove into town to have breakfast, wander around a little bit to get my mind off things. Uh, and then he he breaks this up weird, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 right here. It does uh, and then it does. There's only one restaurant. Yes. Okay. So yeah. The next the next yep. thread he says, there's only one restaurant in the whole town, from what I can tell. I went in there to eat, and the whole experience was sort of bizarre. I'm not really sure how to explain it. Anyway, I ordered the eggs Benedict off the menu. The waitress had a pretty chilly attitude, but nothing out of the ordinary. But then she brought out my food. They'd totally forgotten the eggs on my eggs Benedict. It was just ham and hollandaise. I called the waitress back and told her she forgotten my eggs, and all she said was, We don't have that. I asked how a downer could be out of eggs, especially early in the day. She just said sorry and walked away. It was so weird. I was confused, so I took a second look at the menu. I realized the description doesn't actually list eggs in the Benedict. And then I realized eggs aren't listed anywhere on the menu, 
even in the sides. That is weird, yeah. I mean, there's a... He has pictures of a uh, some menus here, and it's all very... It's like a standard, basically, diner menu, except there are no eggs at all. Like, in any of the... Uh, in any of the dishes, like there's like like a classic like lumberjack platter name thing. It says two ban- pancakes, two bacon strips, and two sauces served with uh, potatoes and toast. Uh, comes with uh, butter and syrup. But usually, you know, as always, it'd be like eggs, mm. whatever. So it, it's a bit odd. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> no, I am too, dude. I love, I, we're I getting love, to dinner time. I'm like, I, lo- I, love, I, love, I love eggs. I love eggs. <laughs> I love eggs. I love eggs so much. <laughs> I need eggs. I will say, like, for this Twitter ARG, pretty cool of him to, like, make a menu, right? That looks oh, like an actual dude, menu. Oh, dude, yeah. How yeah. fun is that? Yeah, I love fun. it. Yeah. Come on. Great stuff. And also remember earlier when he goes out to town, he said that the place he got groceries from was out of eggs. So, yeah, interesting. Up. It's a chicken cult. Chicken cult. A chicken cult called it. What kind of diner doesn't have eggs at all? That might make sense in a vegan restaurant or something, but they have meat all over the menu. I can't figure it out. Also, on my way out, there was this family in a booth sort of watching me leave. They were all being really quiet in a sort of obvious way. They had two twin girls with them. I am definitely not coming back here. And again, there's our second mention of twins. Mm Mm-hmm. How weird, man. I was thinking about it the whole way home. There are too many things that don't make sense, and I don't feel any closer to figuring it out. But one thing seems clear. I'm not welcome here. Can I just just interrupt real quick? The twins thing. Yes. So it has the the mom and the grand, grandpa. How do we know that the mom isn't the twin of the bald, eyeless woman? It's very possible. Can I? I just want to throw that out there as a hypothesis. There was also, and to and and also just to say, when the the fishermen were out there, it was two guys. Or That's two also true. It was two people. You're right. You're I'm right. just saying. I'm just saying. It's an interesting perspective. All right. Thank you. So, and to be honest, I don't know if that's right or wrong, because I don't, I don't think I ever finished this story, because I don't remember how even it is. If, so. Even if you did know, dude, you'd better not tell me. I would, I, I, would, I, would I would. lie and say that whatever you said is interesting and cool, and I'm proud of you. So, <laughs> I like that that's your go-to lie yeah, with me. Absolutely, yeah. Well, I have, <laughs> I, after Baroska, I have to compensate somehow. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to just pat me on the head and Labrador me. <laughs> when I got home, I found something folded up and wedged in my front door near the handle. Oh, God. Someone clearly wants me gone. And it's a little folded note, and it just says, leave. Oh, God, dude. <laughs> Good Lord. It was written... Oh, it was... Go, go ahead. No, continue. <laughs> no, I, I just... I just, I saw that it was written on some sort of tag. He's, he's getting ready to say it. Yeah, no, it was written on the back of a tag of some sort. I suspect it was the eyeless woman from before. I haven't seen her, but I think she's still out there. And then the tag... Dude, if- if it's on the back of the tag of the shirt that was in the yard that he collected, probably is because I'm, lo- I'm, I'm gonna lose my mind. It looks like it's just a like uh, do not wait. Actually, no. Clean and dry repair area thoroughly. Cut patch larger than repair area. Remove paper backing. Place patch over hole and press down firmly. Do not inflate for thirty minutes. This is like a tire repair kit or something. Oh, it says here someone in the comments here. Which Greg ends this thread by saying, "I think something bad is coming. I'm gonna pop another bottle of wine. I don't know what else to do right now. Maybe don't get yourself in. Yeah, maybe don't get right? hammered. You need to be on your A game. Dude, get right in now. your car and leave. <laughs> God. They said leave. Uh, you should leave. Uh, a person says, uh, Nico Doom on Twitter says, it's instructions for a patch kit for floaties and inflatables. Yeah. So maybe something down by the water. Maybe it could be the people in the boat or something. Maybe it could be... Um, uh, the probably. Way, the way they probably. say that, it makes me think that it's probably the people in the boat that maybe came ashore, wrote the note, like ripped it off their, uh, maybe their life vest or something. Yeah, yeah, that would be most likely, I think. Um... Hmm. I don't know. I mean, the next one, it looks like November 29th is the next one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll keep going with the story. Because so now I'm thinking yeah, about keep... Now I'm trying to remember specifics. But yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So November. I saw something out in the woods today. Is that the next? Yes, that is the next part of the thread. Okay. Yeah. November 29th, 2018 at 716 p.m. It says, I saw something out in the woods today. 
I love how simple that intro yeah, is. Yeah, it's, a, it's a good start. It's a good start. Because you know that people are like actively keeping up and waiting on new parts. And then they see that and they're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Here yeah, we they're go. Like, oh, Greg. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Back in the fire. I've been trying to not spend all my time at the house since being cooped up all the time makes me feel crazy. Even though it might not be super safe to be out alone in the woods, it still feels better than being home all the time. God, I can't believe I just referred to that place as home. I've been here too long. Anyway, I was taking a walk today. These woods would be so pretty if I didn't feel like someone was going to murder me out here. I was almost enjoying myself when I stumbled into a clearing and found something strange. There was a single, filthy chair overlooking a ledge. Hmm. And then the image we have here of this chair is, it's its not an outdoor chair. It kind of looks like an old classroom chair almost. Like a fold yeah, up white I would just chair. Say, I would just say it's it, it's it's like it's like an antique chair. Yeah. It definitely has some age to it. Like obviously it's been outside in the elements, obviously, so it's kinda dirty. But I would say it's not a standard chair that you would be that you could just find at a store. Like it yeah, definitely looks like yeah. it has some age to it. This also gives me like stairs in the woods flashbacks as like a structure outside that's not supposed to be there. Obviously yeah. not as extreme as stairs, but the same vibe. Sure. Just something where it's it, it, obviously someone placed it here to look at specifically something. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It didn't seem that creepy at first, but I got this funny feeling, so I took out my phone and pulled up my Maps app. And sure enough, the chair was pointed in the exact direction of my house. I was probably a mile away from the house at that point, but it was still weird. That's fun. That even though mm -hmm. they can't see the house from that chair, it's pointed towards it. That's eerie. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It made me feel queasy, and I didn't want to stick around, so I hustled out of there, but I'd barely walked 30 feet when I found something else. Something way worse. I don't even know how to describe it. What the hell is this? And then we have... Oh, man. It is a rock that has a carving into it in the shape of the stick effigies we've seen before, but this time at the center, we have some kind of animal skull with a vertebrae placed on top of it and seashells stacked around it. And there's a video below, um, and there's just, like, cockroaches crawling over it, or some kind of bug. Yeah, it looks like a, like a wood roach or, like, a wood louse type thing. Yeah. His caption for it says, I took a video of it, too. It freaked me out, but I was mesmerized by it at the same time. I couldn't stop staring at it. I felt like I was in a daze. So now he's becoming almost transfixed by these things. I yeah. mean, if this isn't a sign that it's some kind of pagan cult or some kind of ritual is happening... He, it's, it seems like it's it's almost like he is being prepped up for some kind of ritual. Event. Yeah. Some kind of ritual. Yep. After that, he says, It seems like every day there's something new, but I'm not closer to understanding what's happening out here or why. I finally pulled myself away and practically stumbled away for the rock. I felt dizzy walking away. I just wanted to go back home. I started back in the direction of the house, and that's when I saw her that woman from before no oh boy she was standing up on a hill seemingly staring at nothing i darted behind a nearby tree but luckily i don't think she saw me i hadn't seen her in weeks but i knew she was still out here i took a video from behind the tree i don't even know why it's not like it'll do any good but at least i have proof that i wasn't imagining any of this and, then, and now the woman is just standing, or a figure, I'm guessing it is the woman still, it's the same kind of uh, robe from earlier, or like giant sweater from earlier. Uh, but you can't really see the person's face, their head is down, and the hood is down, and they're just standing there. Which also from before, too, I think that she knows that he's there, obviously there. I know that Greg keeps saying stuff like, oh, she didn't see me, but as we've seen before, she doesn't have eyes, but yeah. she can very clearly understand where you're at. Yeah. Yeah, like, I, I, there's no purpose. If she's blind, there's no purpose in her pointing her head at you. If anything, she's probably got her ear down listening for you, right? Um, so, yeah, she That I'm or sure some kind of mystical there. sense or something, some kind of, like, force that she uses, you know? Yeah. Like, not, I wouldn't say, like, magic or some kind of power, but it does seem like she has that ability. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Eventually, she left the hill and disappeared into the woods. Once I was sure she was gone, I left the tree and practically ran back home. The whole way back, I kept expecting her to appear again and attack me or something. I don't understand what she's doing out here. Is she a witch? That sounds so stupid, but I don't know how to explain any of this. Those weird stick artifacts and now this thing on the rock, it feels like witchcraft or something. 
And who's on that boat I keep seeing out there on the lake? Why is everyone in town so weird? At this point, I just want answers, and I feel like I'm getting close to getting them. I'm just scared of what they might be. I was going to say, I know that he says witch here and stuff. Do you think that it, do you think it's applicable at all to, in this universe where it's obviously 2018, it's been by this point almost 20 years since Blair Witch has been out. Do you think it, do you think it's helpful at all or like realistic that somebody might be like, this reminds me of this thing since it's such a big cultural thing? Or do you think it's good that he's been kind of st like out of, you know, cause to me, I'm like in the story so far, if the only reference you've ever had to something that might be witch or cult, like is like a movie that you might've heard of or seen. I almost wonder if he's like, I feel like I've seen this as something I've seen in a movie or like Blair Witch or something. You don't even have to be that specific, but I'm just wondering, um, if like realistically, do you think that someone in a Twitter ARG for something for social media would want to point to something as obvious as that? Uh, it depends. I mean, it's kind of like the whole zombie movie thing, right? Like characters in zombie films never know they're in a zombie film, right? Even though in real life, if dead people started walking around and moaning, we'd be like, oh, that's a zombie. They're, they're always surprised by it, right? So there's kind of this unspoken rule that characters mm. within a supernatural setting aren't aware that setting can take place. But I feel you... like on Twitter, you don't really get that line of dialogue because it is so social mm. media oriented. So... That's I fair. Know. No, I mean, it's, I, I, I always associate this, it, I guess, as a rebuttal to the zombies. I always associate that in the zombie movies, zombies have never existed. Correct. Yeah, that's until, that's until what I'm point. saying. So, so off of the so back of that, a lot okay. of horror stories like this kind of pretend like those things don't exist. Okay. That's uh, that's good to know. I, I'm, I'm curious if other people felt the same, too. Because if that's the case, then that's totally cool of like, oh, in this universe, these other things have never really happened. So this, it's like totally, I would, these people. I would think so. Maybe if they're being sure. more interactive with the audience and like, it's a lot more conversational than, yeah, you can't really use that excuse. But for what Greg's doing here is like a totally committed Twitter account just for the uh, uh, ARG. I think it makes sense. Totally. Yeah. And I think in any ways too, I think it's totally fair to also be like, um, not to be like, this is something from a movie, but I think that you can be like, well, in a way, I think you could be like, Oh, I've seen this in horror movies, but it's almost like um, this would never happen. Like, a, like in a haunting, right? And like a ghost movie, you're like you you hear about maybe other people being haunted, but you never expect yourself to be a person that's affected by some, some something paranormal. Yeah. So you're like reaching for things where you're like, oh, why? Well, because you could also say like that's why the character's in such a level of disbelief is because every other piece of evidence that he's seen towards this has been a work of fiction. So it could be like lend itself there of like. Hey, I know they're trying to scare me. I've seen this stuff before. This is stupid. Blah, blah, blah. Until it becomes yeah, more and more yeah. real. I didn't know if you could play into that way, but no, I, I think it's fun too to just be like, eh, this thing has maybe never happened before in this universe. Yeah. Yeah. Or at least, or at so. least like those kind of movies that you're going to reference. Yeah. I think so. And it looks like the, and it looks like the uh, next entry, um, because that was the end of that thread. The next entry is December 11th, 2018 at 4.54 p.m. So once again, it's been a couple days. He's got some service again, and he's going to tell us tell us some more. And with our first uh, message in that thread, we have, I found out what those letters spell. Which is, yes! Which is yes! a great a great little kickoff. Oh, off. yes. Oh, yeah, dude. I'd basically forgotten about it after finding them outside the house. I put them in the back of the closet and pretty much stopped thinking about them. But yesterday, I found something else. There's this little alcove upstairs with built-in shelves and a bunch of old books. Sort of a mini library. I was flipping through some of them looking for something to read when I came across this little book about wine. Tucked inside were a couple of old Polaroid photos. They were pretty faded, so it was hard to make out what they were. We have attached pictures of Polaroid photos as well as the book. The first Which one it looks like the, or sorry, that looks like the book just here for the reader. It just it's like a red book, or the audio listeners here. It looks like it's a red book, and he's showing the spine of it, and it says "Notes on the Cellar Book" by George Saintsbury. Mm -hmm. oh, there you go. Yeah, so there's that, and then there's just like yeah, some Polaroids tucked in there. Which uh, from what we see here, there's just like faded pictures of maybe the woods. Yep. One says uh, the first to the first one he says the first one was pretty unremarkable it looks like it's just photos of the trees outside which it doesn't mm -hmm. seem to be anything suspicious in that photo i will say it's kind of creepy though it's it creepy like a layer it, it almost looks it's just the age of it like it looks aged in a way that's just kind of i don't know a bit haunting like almost ethereal like there's it, there's like weird faded like the way the light is reflected in it it feels very uh i don't know yeah ethereal to me yeah yeah 
Uh, the second one was even blurrier. For a minute, I didn't know what it w I was looking at, but then I realized it was of the house and letters I found on the ground a couple weeks ago. The photo was super fuzzy, so it took me a second, but I was able to make it out. Deep Water Chapel. Oh, dude, I knew it was going to be this uh, stuff. God! Uh, uh, oh! My heart. Oh, oh, your old, the house you're in is an old chapel. Oh, dude, I knew it was going to be something like this. Oh, that's like, it's Damn like it. music. It's music to me. Oh, it's so oh, good. Oh, it's so good. Weird, culty, weird pagan religion type stuff, dude. Oh, I man. love it. I love it. It's so good. Deep I love it water too, but chapel. I'm like, I, I, oh, oh, uh, oh, right in the field. Chapel. Oh, it's yeah. so good. Oh. I love it. Ah, uh, it's like crack. It's just like, oh, I'm in an abandoned church, the deep water chapel. Like you can imagine. Yeah, so I, ah, it's, ah, I was, <laughs> love. I was reading that deal. Like you said, it's like crack, and it was. You said crack right after. Like, oh, I love it. It's exactly what I love. And you're like, it's like crack. <laughs> <laughs> it's like okay, Isaiah. I learned a little something new about you. Yeah. Right there. How do you think oh. I keep all these podcasts and shows going, man? You gotta. <laughs> what, yeah. you, haven't, you haven't tapped into it's the crack supply. meta yet. You haven't got one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> crack meta. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't gotten into the crack DLC yet? Oh, yeah. dude, you got to get in you there. Get, you get, like, the best, two, most productive two years of your life, and then you're dead of after course. five. But for those two, man, you can churn out some bangers. Yeah. Ah. Oh. Whew. Deepwater Chapel. Oh, that's so good. Okay. All right. This is so weird. I've never heard that name before. Was my house a church or something? I spent the afternoon going through all the other books in the library, but didn't find any other pictures. I don't know what to make of this. I'll let you know if I find anything else, but yeah. I don't know. Oh, so good. The D the Deepwater Chapel thing is such a it's such a good reveal. Did we ever did we say where exactly in the country he's at? Because now I'm thinking that he is in the south or in a southern part of maybe like the southern coast a bit. I don't think he ever said. We see the pictures which show a lot of pines. So I'm thinking more east, south. Yeah, like, like uh, are you thinking east, south? I was thinking like Washington or Oregon kind of deal. He could, I mean, he could, he could, but there's also a lot of like uh pine type trees around like north carolina true you know, true south carolina mm -hmm. so that kind of area um that would fit the vibe but yeah oh man deep water chapel that ring it's right right yeah, where i like it to no, be that's that's fantastic especially with all this stuff and it looks like he he up he updates again a couple days later at december 13th almost exactly at midnight which yep. is kind of crazy and the message he says to begin this is she was here that woman was in my house. Oh, okay. Oh, man. What I wouldn't, what I wouldn't give to be following this Twitter account when it was happening. While this guy is yeah. posting this, and like you're scrolling through your phone, you're like, "What? Oh. <laughs> my show's on. My show's on." <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's fun about these. You can get moments like that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's dope. Um. So it, anyway, continuing with where he says, "Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. I can barely type." Sorry, I'll try to explain. I like how hurried that is too, like yeah, the yeah. like the panic. Very you can realistic. feel it. Yeah. All right. So, I was in the woods out back yesterday when it started pouring. It happened really suddenly, and even though I wasn't far from the house, I got soaked anyway. It rained most of the evening. I left my clothes by the fireplace to dry and ended up going to bed early, or I guess it was today. So, sorry, I, I'm still not really awake yet. Anyway, I had this awful dream tonight. Sorry if I'm rambling a bit. I'm, I'm still trying to collect my thoughts. Sorry, my hands are shaking. Okay, Greg, we get it. You're, you're <laughs> fucking sorry. <laughs> In the... <laughs> Good God. Sorry, hi. I'm like, Greg, just stop do typing you sorry. Want... Just tell me what you need to do. Do you want the writer to be a guy who has an eyeless woman in his house or not? <laughs> I, I, I do, but at the same time, I wish that if, if it was this thing where it's like, sorry, my hands are shaking. I'd rather things things just be like misspelled as if he's typing it quickly and be like, oh, I get it. He's rushed. All right, right? that's he's fair. Collecting that's his fair. Thoughts. Sorry, sorry. I need to let you know. Sorry. Okay, so I think. Okay, I think you're a hater. My hands are shaking. Okay, I'm scared. Sorry. <laughs> I think you're just a hater. <laughs> okay. All right. Fine. I'm a hater. No, uh, no, I don't, uh, no. I don't, uh, ironically, you are correct. There were different ways to convey that, but anyway. In the dream, I was on the deck outside with a bunch of friends from back home. We were all sitting in a circle. My friend Eric was there, talking about how creepy the woods were. He was saying how the trees were just big black silhouettes, and anything could be out there watching you, and you never know it. 
He was sort of freaking me out, but I was trying not to show it. I'm all, I know what you're doing and it's not going to work. You're not going to scare me. And Eric sort of narrowed his eyes at me and says, how about you take, how about you take the quotes? You're good at this. You want to do the quotes? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to give Eric, I bet I can scare you. Yeah, there you go. Something about the way he said it made me uneasy. And I was like, all right, <laughs> very funny. You can stop now. But Eric wasn't smiling anymore. He was just staring back at me. The whole mood seemed to shift at that point. Nobody in the circle was talking anymore, and it suddenly got really quiet. No sound except the wind and the lake below. Any trace of joking had disappeared from Eric's face. After a long minute, he slowly cocked his head to the side a bit and said, Is there someone here with us right now who shouldn't be? <laughs> All of a sudden, I was too scared to break Eric's gaze. After I'd see something, I'd afraid I'd see something I didn't want to. For a long time, we just stared at each other. Nobody said anything. Then, very softly, Eric said, Is there somebody watching you sleep right now, Greg? <laughs> Ooh, that's, <funny. laughs> like that. that's when I bolted awake. It was the middle of the night. I was alone in my room, but I had this weird feeling that someone had just been there in the room with me. I laid there in bed for a minute, too terrified to move. Too scared to breathe, even. And then I heard something downstairs. At least I thought I did. This house is always making sounds, so I couldn't be sure. I hesitated for a second, then crept out of bed and went down the hall, trying to be as quiet as possible. From the second floor landing, I could see the living room and part of the kitchen. Everything seemed normal. I could hear the wind blowing pretty loudly outside, so I figured maybe I hadn't heard anything after all. I tried to calm myself down. I was wide awake at that point and too shaken to go back to bed, so I went downstairs to get a snack or some coffee or something. I walked into the kitchen and stopped dead in my tracks. There's a door in the kitchen that leads outside, and it was wide open. Oh, God. <laughs> in the picture here, there's a picture that's accompanied with that, and it's a picture of his kitchen, and it's just leading out to some steps that lead into absolute darkness <laughs> uh, to the outside world. Oh. Uh, this is Bro. good. This is really great. This is like the, the pacing, the direction, all that. That dream yeah. is so good. Someone in your dream saying, is there someone watching you sleep right now? Oh, man. Well, yeah, because it seems totally affected that the person that is in the house with you is almost communicating to you through your sleep yeah you know what i mean yeah. like the uh greg's friend in that dream being like talking in that way makes me think like oh really like there he is talking directly to the person that is like plaguing him yeah in his house. yeah oh that's so good i i know i locked it i lock all the doors every night and even if i forgot to lock it i know i wouldn't leave the door open like this the whole kitchen floor is wet with rain I'm calling the locksmith first thing in the morning to come change the locks. Shit. I want to leave, but I don't even know where I'd go. I'm alone out here. Should I find a motel? And I just yes. realized my wet clothes are gone. She stole my clothes. I'm not spending the night here. The, uh, I'm guessing he means that he uh, had clothes out on some kind of uh, wire like to, to dry, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. So... No, like he mentioned that it was pouring the rain and he comes inside and like throws his wet clothes in a pile and goes to bed. So okay. this, well, yeah, so this, she took the clothes there. She took the clothes that were in his house. Okay. Yeah. All right. Also, so, something funny about that. The la if you click on the last tweet, I realize my clothes are gone and you scroll down a bit. I, maybe it doesn't happen to everyone, but I got a clothes ad for like jeans. <laughs> like never, never get wet in your new quick dry <laughs> pants. <laughs> Thank you, X. Thank you. Very cool. Now, Thank you for here, that. Just, just as a, another thought experiment here with the, the great photo of the kitchen door being open that leads outside. Do you, do you wish that there was, like, footsteps or, like, some kind of footprint on the tile floor leading outside or even inside uh, kind of thing to show, like, somebody's... I or mean... Do you, or, do you, or do you like the fact that it's that's clear? I like the ambiguousness of it, I think. Um, because it's, like, what rooms it, it, were they it, in, where'd they go, you know? It does make it feel more paranormal, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think it's a good touch. Yeah, I mean... I think either way, I think it's cool. I just... It, it's... It's definitely a stylistic choice here that's happening with having that. You know what I mean? Like, 
someone is inexplicably coming in and doing that, which also, um, the, he did respond on the 13th as well to one of the people. Uh, on, yes. On, uh, so like, like, he responded to one of the quotes or one of the responses. Yeah. So someone replied to that last tweet and said, if she was able to navigate in the house and she has no eyes, that means she's familiar with the house and the house layout. She's been in there before and knows it well enough to walk around without bumping into anything and making a lot of noise. So then he quote tweet, Greg quote tweets and says, I didn't even think of this. I left, but I'm still freaking out a bit. I'm trying to find a hotel or something, which is a fun little interaction, you know, with what's going on. It is, yeah. And he doesn't respond. He doesn't update us until 10 days later on December 23rd, Um, which let me find the top one here. This one looks to be a bit longer. December 23rd here. I'm uh, sorry. I haven't said anything in a while. That's where it begins. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So 10 days later, he says, I'm sorry I haven't said anything in a while. I've been staying in a motel about an hour outside of town. There you go, Greg. (laughs) That's the spirit. There you go. (laughs) When I left the house that night, I just kept driving until I felt like I was far enough away to feel safe. To feel safe. Mm -hmm. I called the locksmith, but they weren't able to come out right away. And there was no way I was going back to the house without new locks. So I've been waiting out here until I can go back. Basically doing nothing. Jumping at every little sound and feeling crazy. And I want to say here, that's another little thing to me that indicates that the entire town is a part of this chapel or a part of this maybe paganistic, you know, even a satanic religion thing. Because now the locksmith's like, "Mm, I don't know, I doubt it. There's no one else that's living out on that lake. Yeah, there's people in town, but dude, you're telling me that you, you couldn't come out? On a, on a like, there's no one else. Yeah, really what living business on are you really? getting to? Like, uh, like the, you have I'm so saying. many customers beating down your door. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Finally, a couple days ago, the locksmith called back and said he'd come out. So I checked out of the motel and got in my car to drive home. It was a pretty long drive back, and the closer I got to the woods, the worse I felt. In my head, I knew going back was wrong, but I can't just leave for good. I don't know. I can't explain it. I can't leave. I don't expect anyone to understand. I don't even understand. I think it's because he's getting indoctrinated. Like I, he, I think he's, he's getting indoctrinated. indoctrinated spiritually, and I also think there's a part mm-hmm. of him that needs to know what all this means. What does Deepwater Chapel mean? What does the the town mean? What does you know his grandfather? What is his connection to all of it? He's been here before. What was that like? Too many too many loose ties, and he's being influenced negatively by something that is like coercing him to stay. Yep. Yep. Anyway, I drove past town and reached the woods, where the roads get worse and harder to drive on. They get twisty as you drive up to the house, and you have to be careful not to hit deer. I almost always see a dozen or so deer on my drive, but today, there were none. Not a single deer in sight. In fact, the woods seemed a lot quieter than usual. I could have been imagining it, but something definitely seemed off. I was almost ready to turn around when something darted across the road. It was so fast that I wasn't sure I saw it at all. I panicked and swerved off the road and into a deep groove by the roadside. By the time I realized what had happened, the thing was gone. I had no idea what it was. It it was just a blur. But it wasn't a deer. It was red. Red like blood. Worse, my car was stuck. It's my mom's old car, this weak little two-wheel drive, and I couldn't manage to get it out of the groove. I sat there for a long time trying to figure out what to do. I knew it wasn't a good idea to walk the rest of the way, but if I didn't, I'd miss the locksmith and I'd have to either spend the night in the house with old locks or go back to the motel, which I couldn't afford. I wasn't too far from the house, so I made the most sense to walk the rest of the way and call a tow truck from home. I needed to meet the locksmith anyway, so I got out and started walking. Once I was outside, I realized I'd been right about the woods seeming quieter than usual. I couldn't even hear any birds. It was dead silent. My footsteps seemed so loud. Every twig that cracked under my shoe sounded like a bone breaking. I was periodically checking my phone's GPS to make sure I was heading the right way. I had just checked my route and was about to put my phone away when I saw something that made my heart sink. It was another of those artifacts. Like the ones I'd seen on my first day here but it had one of my gloves tied to it from the rainstorm last week. When I left my clothes by the fire to dry, there was a pair of gloves with them. So now we have one of those effigies, but it's the gloves that were stolen from his room now hung up in the middle of this shape. 
I think that we can confirm then that the person making it is the woman with the hood. Um, since we have to assume that she was the one who, who was stole out there the clothes. Yeah. Him. Who stole the clothes, correct? Yep. Yeah. I knew that woman had taken my clothes that night, and this just confirmed it. I also knew I'd find the rest of my clothes before I even saw them. And sure enough, I found more of those artifacts not far from the first. I found my other glove, my socks, and a bandana, everything from that night except for a sweatshirt I'd been wearing. And it's just the same kind of photos again, except with other various clothes inside of the artifacts. Um, basically just like strung up through twine in the middle of these artifacts hanging on various trees in the woods. Which also, just to has, as a thought as well, there being no... Um, there being no animals makes me think that also they're ushering something there like maybe they're I, I almost feel like something sacrificial is coming some kind of evil is coming towards um greg in this house or this chapel and now even like because you know that's usually an indicator too like birds yeah animals yeah. can kind of sense these things as well so i'm wondering yeah when they go quiet something's happened typically yeah i left them alone this time i didn't want to touch them all i wanted to do was set was get back to the house, get the locks changed, call a tow truck. I started jogging a bit, wanting nothing more than to get away from those stick things. But after a while, I started to think that I should have been home already. I slowed my pace and took out my phone, but it wouldn't calibrate this time. It couldn't seem to locate me in the GPS. Still, I could hear the lake off to my left, which meant if I kept walking alongside it, I should get to my house eventually, so I kept moving and tried not thinking about getting lost. I must have gotten turned around because I was walking for what seemed like ages. Gosh, someone turned on a vacuum cleaner in the house and it scared me to death. Oh my <laughs> dude, gosh. You, you need to figure out your house situation. Yeah, I, I do. I need, do to, these raids, I need to get my you're house getting... in order. Well, someone got right outside my door and turned it on, so all I heard was beep, like. <laughs> Gosh, I'm just gonna I'm gonna find I'm gonna buy a shed and I'm gonna set out there and no one can bother me. <laughs> there you go. That'll make me feel better. Um I couldn't hear the I, I kept moving and tried not to think about getting lost. Must have gotten turned around because I was walking for what seemed like ages. I found myself in a part of the woods that seemed unfamiliar. I had no idea where I was, and then suddenly I saw something off in the distance. Something bright white almost seeming to glow against the dark trees. Oh, weird. Yeah. I mean, it's like a, to describe the, the image to audio listeners right now, it's, I would say it's a fairly standard photo of trees, but there's just like white, almost like egg looking like eggs kind of. Well, like large. Lar if we get to the oh, next shit. few tweets, <laughs> I couldn't figure out what it was from a distance. So I went closer trying to be as quiet as I could. When I actually got close enough to see what it was, my mouth literally fell open. It was eggs. Huge eggs, all in a cluster like a nest. Oh my god, dude. What are we what are we getting at? What, are we, these are, what is happening now? I'm, I'm so lost in this stuff. Like, is this gonna be about a giant fucking chicken, dude? What are we doing here? <laughs> If, I, if, it, if this turns into a giant rooster, I am going to be so pissed. Because <laughs> even the giant red, it, it, the speedy, a speedy chicken cross the road. Oh, my God. How did the chicken cross the road? Are, is this seriously where we're going, dude? <laughs> That's what happened. Or, oh. Why don't you find out? <laughs> we're we're, we're going to find. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they were enormous. It's hard to explain their size, but you can sort of see them in relation to my boot here. So, what do you mean? It's hard to explain. I see them. They're <laughs> giant. In the previous, in the previous photo, there's a tree, and they dwarf the tree. It's literally the the these eggs are like what? They're a bigger than of, a basketball. Yeah, they're like basketball size. Just these big yeah. giant white eggs in the middle of the forest. Yeah. I f <laughs> I felt like I was dreaming. Before I even knew what I was doing, I touched one. I couldn't help myself. It was warm. Okay, I just... <laughs> <laughs> okay, dude. I couldn't help myself. I had to touch the egg. <laughs> I had a sudden <laughs> urge to smash it and see what was inside, but then just as quickly decided against it. 
that's odd i would have expected with how quickly he burned the artifacts <laughs> earlier i would expect him just like heel stomp one smash of these smash open. smash let's see what happens exactly yeah. let's hope mom takes it to the diner mad. i want a proper eggs benedict well, you guys don't have eggs? Serve me one of these, huh? Idiot. Yeah, he, well, you know there's giant eggs on the wood, <laughs> I felt sick, like I was going to throw up if I didn't leave right away. I left the clearing and tried to listen for the lake, then headed in that direction. I got to the lake shore and felt a little better. Since I was out of the trees, I had a better view of my surroundings, and I was able to pinpoint my house a ways down the shore. I never thought I'd be so happy to see it. The rest of the way back, I felt like I had vertigo. I couldn't make sense of everything that just happened. I still can't. I reached the house and somehow felt a little better once I was inside. The locksmith arrived a little bit later and changed out the locks. I watched him work in a daze. I also had him install deadbolts. I called the tow truck and they got my car out of the ditch. But now I'm alone again and I can't stop thinking about what I saw. I can't figure any of this out. I don't know what's happening. I know I should leave, but I just can't. I can't. At least nobody can get inside tonight. At least I'm safe inside. Hmm. That's the end of that thread. Well, which also, what, that's the end of that thread there. And it's interesting, too, that he says that the, uh, that the, that, what was it? The, he's like, the, the, even the guy worked in a daze, yeah, basically. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there's just something kind of interesting about that particular thing that I think is just kind of interesting. I don't know why. I it, it makes it just seem like he's like not not zombie, but I, like almost like you know how like whenever you see culty stuff, you're kind of brainwashed or you're kind of just like yeah, going yeah. with the flow. Kind of. I, I don't know if I don't know if you felt the same way, but I just I, I felt like there was some kind of correlation there, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Feels like so. So the next one here is December twenty eighth, and uh, the first one I see here I think is I heard something. Something was outside. Yep. All right. So continuing there. He says, I was in the kitchen washing a glass and I heard something outside on the deck, a scratching sound, and then it stopped. I thought I imagined it, but then I heard footsteps. And for some reason, I just ran outside without thinking. I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't even know if I'm scared anymore. I just want answers. I can't be sure, but I think it was her. I saw someone running into the woods. I'm sure it was her, but I couldn't catch her in time. I thought about chasing her into the woods, but decided against it. I don't want to get lost out there at night. I turned around to go back inside, and that's when I saw what she'd been doing on my deck in the first place. I shouldn't be surprised by these artifacts, but this one was huge, taller than me, and it had my sweatshirt from the storm tied in the middle. And then here we have a much larger God. effigy this time, with his shirt tied in the middle of it, and the words written next to it that read, Fear the New Moon. How are you doing, Hunter? Good God. <laughs> just a... It's just a, a... Horrifying thing. It's so large, too. Yeah. With the scale of... I'm also... It's kind of funny. I mean, I'm kind of... I'm picturing this, like, eyeless, hairless woman, like, trudging through the forest with this giant... <laughs> triangle <laughs> thing. She's like, ah, God, it's like getting caught on weeds and stuff. <laughs> Pulling it through, having to like probably the, the twine, being able to hold the sweatshirt, probably be a huge pain in the ass. So I don't know, just kind of funny to think, but it it, it, it is horrifying. Yeah, yeah. And also, fear the m new moon is very interesting. Mm -hmm. Fear the new moon. The new moon. So after that, he says, honestly, I was just going to leave it there. I'm sick of this. I was about to go back inside when I noticed there was something written on the wall behind the artifact. I had. I hadn't even seen it before, which is the fear of the new moon. What does that mean? I don't know where that woman got a marker, and I don't know how familiar she feels around my house, of pro or I don't like how familiar she feels around my house and property. I hate that I consider this my house now, that this feels normal now. I'm losing it. I want this to end. Whatever this new moon shit is, I feel like something's coming. Screw this. Yeah, what was your first indicator that something was coming? <laughs> well, yeah, it's like, dude, no shit. Something was coming. I don't know. Um, and then he also puts on December 28th here, he says, I guess the next the next new moon is January 5th. And he gives like a little indicator, which yeah. is kind of interesting. That's so, fun. And, it, and also we have the next post, which is January 4th. The night before the new moon, yeah. Yep. 
yeah, it says there's going to be a storm tomorrow, and then the new moon is tomorrow too. I should be fine. I'll just stay inside. Just very simple little updates here. That would have been so cool to be a part of that initial run. And then we get and then uh, I a believe long, a thread in June 5th. the biggest thread of the whole thing is the January 5th thread. I think this is the main one. Um, okay. Yeah, because I was going to say, after this, the last one is January 16th. So we're coming up on yeah. something, but it looks like the January 5th is huge. Yes, January is 5th is the main thing. Yep. I just... I have this, which I'm preemptively just speculating along with the viewer, hopefully, or the listener here. Is, um, I just feel like the woman, the hairless, eyeless woman, is somehow connected to Greg in some way. The twin aspect is just, it's, it's, there's so much foreshadowing to that to where I don't know if we're going to have something where it's like, I'm actually your mother, Greg, or something like that. So, something kind of crazy. Because also, we have not had a lot of of uh insight in from like is the mom does the mom even care that greg is there like it, it, obviously it's the spotty kind of uh cell service sure you have that but it, it it just feels like what exactly is this relation this retaliation also out of all the family members you're saying the grandpa just gave it to greg randomly what is what is the the grandpa setting up that we haven't had yet that also didn't go into his parents hands I, there's just a lot of things where I don't think Greg even really knows the kind of danger he's in. Obviously, he doesn't know the kind of danger he's in, but I think like something kind of family oriented where it's like he was doomed to fail since he was born or something like that. So January 5th, the night of the new moon, uh, we have this tweet. Oh, wait, too. Okay, yeah, New, new Year. Sorry, January, duh. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. Holy shit. Did I go? Yeah, it's, it's, it's been a whole January. year. Yeah, it's been a week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. It's been storming all day and into the night. Thunder and everything. I've stayed inside all day. Nothing has happened yet. Maybe nothing will happen. Still, I'm nervous. I've been freaked out all day. Maybe I shouldn't have stayed. I don't know what's wrong with me. I should leave tomorrow. I'm not even really sure what I'm saying. I just need to occupy myself with something. Writing this makes me feel less alone. It's like I'm talking to someone. I can't do this anymore. I'm leaving tomorrow. First thing in the morning, I don't care about selling this house anymore. I just want to go home. I just need to make it through the night. I'll be fine if I stay inside. The locks are new and nobody can get in. I'll be fine. I'm going to go get some wine and stay in the upstairs bedroom tonight. It'll be okay. And then he replies a few hours later by saying, she's here. She was in the cellar. Oh, God. I practically ran oh, right Lord. into her. She didn't even hear me because of the thunder outside. Her back was to me, and she was standing dead still in the middle of the room, just staring at the wall. So oh. I actually really like this picture. <laughs> what a wonderful, wonderful photo. It's great. It's great. So for the audio so listeners, uh, standing down in the cellar from earlier, staring at the crest on the wall, um, it is her with her back facing the camera, and she's got, like, ratty, mangled hair, and her uh she's wearing the hoodie from before but the hood's down and she's just staring into the crest very very creepy very good vignette too it's just like this old brick wooden cellar kind of thing and just staring deeply at the crest i knew that crest was creepy too yeah, earlier i was yeah. like what what the hell is going on with that crest <laughs> i couldn't move i was petrified <laughs> at first i was afraid i was petrified yeah exactly yeah. i was petrified <laughs> <laughs> All I could do was stand there like a fool and stare at the back of her head. And then she turned around and she spoke to me. Oh, here we go. She said she won't hurt me. She said she'd explain everything. I'm sorry, this is all happening so fast. She's sitting in my living room now. I can't believe this is happening. What? So the eyeless bald woman is just like... Hey, let me tell you what's up. And now they're casually talking in the living room? <laughs> just wait. Wait for it. Wait for okay, it. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So, sorry. I'm just trying to make sense of this. She said she'll tell me everything. I'll be back. So then time passes and he continues with the thread. Okay. Which here? Do we, wait. Let me see. So he said, I'll be back at 845. And then um, he comes back two hours later or almost three hours. 10, 1057. A couple hours yeah. later. And he says, okay. So. I'll try to relay everything she said, but there was so much of it. 
I can barely keep track of it all. I'll start at the beginning. First, she says she made the stick things for my protection. She says it's dangerous out here and she was trying to protect me. When I asked what she was trying to protect me from, she was quiet for a long time. When she finally replied, I could barely hear her. You want to do the quotes? There are things in the water. I didn't really believe her, but I didn't have any rational explanation for the things I've seen. So instead, I just listened. Here's what she told me. A long time a long ago... Time... Oh, no, oh, oh no, perfect, perfect. You go right ahead. Yeah, sorry. A long time ago, something came from the sky and landed in the lake. It brought something with it. Something ancient and strange. The people who lived here began to commute, commune with it. They protected it from the outside world, devoted their lives to it, and in return, the thing gave them a gift. The people were blessed with abnormally long, healthy lives and many children, but it all came with a price. I had so oh, good. I had so many questions, but didn't know which ones to ask, so I just sat there in silence and took it all in. The woman continued. In the beginning, there was just the one. It spent most of the time in the deep lake. It spent most of the time deep in the lake, slumbering. But over time, it made more. Instinctively, I asked about the eggs. Oh, sorry. It made more. The Instinctively, I asked about the eggs I saw in the woods. The woman nodded. There are so many of them now. They come from the water to lay eggs. And the people take care of them. Hide them away until they hatch. But when they hatch, they need to feed. Dude, we're getting we're gonna get into giant alien chickens. <laughs> How do you feel about um, that, I, giant alien chickens? I mean, I don't know. I mean, people, I, <laughs> I don't uh, know. I don't. I also, I also am getting a. Uh, I also am getting a feeling that this is Greg's real mom. I want to say that. I'm, okay. gonna, I'm I'm putting that on. I'm putting that bet down. All right. At this point, I was starting to put two and two together. I thought about all the twins I've seen in town. She must have sensed my understanding because she spoke again. I told you there was a price. The people in this town are blessed with many children. But they don't, but they don't get to keep them all. When the eggs hatch, the people must bring one of their own to the woods. The creatures need to eat. She was quiet again. Then... They start with your eyes. It's his mom. It's the twin. It's his. It's his mom's twin. I'm telling you. Dude. I, I asked her how she knew all this, but I already knew the answer. I know because it happened to me. When I was a girl, my father brought me into the woods with the others, offered me up to the newborns. She turned her head towards the window, like she was gazing into the distance. They took my eyes. I waited until she was ready to speak again. It was a long time before she did. She told me how she was led to one of the eggs, how she watched it break open, how something came out of it. She doesn't know if she managed to push the creature off or if someone helped her, but she got away and ran into the woods. She ran until she couldn't breathe anymore. I felt completely bewildered. None of this made any sense to me, but at the same time, it did. Somehow. I had so many questions I wanted to ask, but I couldn't sort my thoughts. I couldn't figure out what to say. Finally, I asked, Why are you telling me this now, after all this time? The woman didn't say anything at first. She took a long, labored breath. It's the same every year. They come out of the water in the fall, lay their eggs. A few of them begin to hatch early. They feed on animals in the woods. They need strength to make it back to the water. But most of them hatch when it's darkest. She turned Even without eyes. Oh, so I, I, I figure we mm. could just... Keep yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going, keep going. Uh, oh, sorry. No, sorry. Go ahead. So I, I, sorry. I, gotcha. I thought her quote was even without... My bad. She turned to me. Even without eyes, I felt like she was staring right at me. Tonight is the new moon. Tonight is the ceremony. My stomach began to sink as realization set in. Realization about what was happening out there in the woods at that very moment. We have to do have something to... Do... to... Oh, 
Fuck, so fuck you're, sorry. You're, sorry. Good, you're good. I appreciate the enthusiasm. <laughs> we have to do something to stop it, I blurted out. I started getting out of my chair, but she just shook her head. She said there was nothing we could do. It happens the same way every year. We can't stop it. But I wasn't listening anymore. I don't know what came over me, but I jumped up and ran out the door, ran into the woods. I don't even know where I was going. At some point, the rain had stopped. It was dark and I couldn't see anything, but I could hear things all around me. Things moving through the trees, and I could see lights in the distance. Fire or flashlights. I don't know. I had no idea where to go or what to do. More than once, something ran by me in the trees. I was using my phone as a flashlight and tried to take pictures of the trees, trying to see what was out there, but everything was happening so fast. I don't know what these are. Really fun pictures of something weird and red in the um, in the woods here. I'm gonna. I, there's more pictures. I'm gonna speculate that these. It looks like a beak on one of them. I think we are going into giant chicken territory. I don't know. Um, <laughs> what do you think? Of, what, not, do you, what do you think of the photos? The first two photos. What's your feeling on them? What's what I mean is. That, so to describe to the viewer it's like he's taking a picture there's flash so he's, you get some of the weeds in front of him but he, it's like a dark um forest but there is a red it kind of looks like a skinless person but in the second photo when it, it, it the eyes you can see are looking it's like almost as if the person is looking at them and then from what i see here i can't tell if this is a brush in front of them but it looks like it, there's a beak on the thing on the person's face okay after. And then below that, it says, this is the clearest shot I could get. They all move so fast. And it's a blurred photo of it looks like a skinless thing. You, it looks like you can kind of see the bone on the face of it. Once again, beakish, birdish I would, is what I, I would, would say. consider that a skull. I think that looks more like a skull. Sure. I I, I think, like I said, <laughs> it looks like it's like bloody, like blood skin draped over a skull, whatever. But it doesn't look like a regular nose. It's it's arced in a way that looks beakish. You have to be honest with yourself. Say it. You're not losing the chicken narrative, are you? <laughs> I am refusing until it proves otherwise. We are in giant egg chicken territory. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so the giant chickens are out there. I like this one of like the blurred photo of like the bloody skull thing. Oh, it's fun. It's I a think, really fun I think, photo. I think yeah. that's neat, yeah. Super fun. I ran for what seemed like an eternity. Ran in circles. I had no idea where I even was. And then somehow, I was back in that same clearing where the eggs had been. But they were gone now. Nothing but bits of shell left on the ground. Then, yeah, so we get the same kind of area that we were at earlier. And now it's just like kind of broken shell fragments on the ground. Yeah. It was over. I was too late. It had already happened, and they cleaned everything up. I was too late. I stood alone in the clearing. The lights in the distance were disappearing. It was getting quieter, and just like that, I was running again, running toward the lake. I don't even know why. I couldn't do anything. Branches scraped my face as I ran blindly through the trees. And that is the that end looks like of that thread. That, that is the end of January 5th, Fred, and he doesn't thread and he doesn't i think i said fred uh it, it that's the end of the january 5th thread and he doesn't come back in our last this is the last wait hold on no here. okay this or is very stupid there is a bit more after it oh, okay so um, if you go click go on the tweet that says i don't i couldn't do anything branches scrape my face wait no not even that one why did he format oh, I don't know. It this way this is driving me i don't insane. know what to say right now i'm gonna leave in the if, morning no uh so if you go to the tweet uh wait it might it might be that one let me look yeah 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 yeah, so yeah. go to that one then and scroll then it says up. yeah yeah uh, yeah i'm back at the house now okay yeah so after that uh after he says running branches scrape my face um he says i reached the water but there was nothing mm. there i saw some faint ripples out in the black water but besides that it was silent it was over i was too late i'm back at the house now the woman's gone. It's so quiet. I don't know what to say right now. I'm going to leave in the morning. I'm sorry. I just... I just don't know what else to say. I'm sorry. And there we have the end of the, that January 5th thread, I think. 
Yeah, so that should be the end of it. And then it goes up to the January 16th one, and this is our last... His last entry was on January 16th. Yes, this is the finale, as far as we know, to... At the moment, at least, because it could pick up any day, you know, these things, but... Sure, you never uh, know. At the moment, this is the end of the series. I'm still here. I'm alive. I left the house after that night. I decided not to sell it. I don't think anyone would buy it anyway. I locked the doors, and I got in my car, and I left. I'm home now, trying to process everything. The morning after, it was so quiet and peaceful in the woods, it was like nothing had happened at all. I'm still not sure what to believe. It sort of feels like it happened to someone else, or like I dreamed it, maybe. Sorry it took me so long to update, I wasn't sure what to say. I still have so many questions. I might never have all the answers, but something happened out there. I can't explain it, and I don't know if I could have done anything to stop it. But whatever it was, I can't let it happen again. That's why I'm not selling the house. That woman said this happens every year. If she was telling the truth, then maybe there's something I can do next time. I have to try. So I guess that's all for now. I'm heading back to school next week, so hopefully that will take my mind off things. I need some sense of normalcy again. I'm not sure when I'll tweet again. I need to take a break and get my head together, but I'll be back. I have to go back. I won't let it happen again. And there we have the ending of the Gregory 88 story. The Gregory 88 story ends there. You know what's interesting about this one is, uh, is the realism of following the story. And I kind of like that it doesn't get so detailed to where it's like Greg just found out everything. Greg found, like, you get little glimpses of stuff, and you have this woman who's obviously, in my opinion, is definitely uh, the twin of his mom who's trying to uh, protect him, which is also maybe why when he does these things, and he burns these protective things at first, maybe that's why he gets some of the things that are uh, messing with him, but it seems like he was protected in this incident, in this incident um, from whatever kind of uh, creature that's been existing in this lake for however long and now these town folks have been just been living here forever which is why they're so like oh this is somebody new like they're probably super super old you know what i mean um and they're having these twins and they have to offer them up to the chicken aliens i'm still believing that they're chicken aliens but i will say the story reminds me a lot of like dagon it reminds me of like uh like a, the uh Innsmouth story where it's like a town is plagued by a creature or a deity. In this case, it was like some eldritch god in the case of H.P. Lovecraft, and it makes them live longer and it makes them rich, but it distorts them into fish people. It kind of gave me that vibe. Obviously, the people aren't being like transformed in that way. They just have to kind of sacrifice one of their offspring, um, which is kind of interesting. But I don't know. It, 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 this was a fun one. I think it's cool. I mean, how, how do you feel about it? How do you feel about the ending? All right, so I remember now why I didn't remember how it ended. Uh, and it's because I forgot that it ended that way. It ended like what felt mm. like in virtue, like, you know, middle of the action. Um, okay. I love the premise a lot. Yep. I think it's the idea, like, I've had my grandfather's old house. There's a squatter there. It becomes this, like, cult conspiracy. I, to me, the story peaks with the deep water chapel reveal because uh, it asks so many yeah. questions about why was this a church? What did my grandfather have to do with it? Was he the pastor? Did he come to own it? Yep. Why was it changed? Why is everyone in the town around it? Is this why there's cult mm -hmm. happenings around it? Because it was a church. It, it puts you right in the seat. I think that's the pinnacle of the story. And then from there, I think it, it nosedives a bit. Um, yep. there, uh, what it feels like from a writing perspective is that he had a lot of threads. I say he because the name's Greg. Whoever wrote this. Um, I feel like whoever wrote this had a lot of threads that they were actively working on that for some reason they wrapped up really quickly. Um, we did not get an explanation as to what the eyeless one... Like, we get that she's eyeless because the thing's bitter face. Sure. But we don't get an explanation as to how she connects to the chapel, why she has a loyalty to 
the grandson of maybe the preacher, the person who owns it. We do not know what the deep, I mean, sure. We are given enough inference. We can assume that when this thing came to earth, that maybe the, the deep water chapel was its first congregants, right? Maybe the pastor, maybe, you know, his grandfather was the person who spoke and like convinced townspeople that they need to give in to, excuse me, that they need to give in to these new alien invaders. And you could mm -hmm. even imagine a really cool scenario where you have a pastor in this old timey church who is convincing his congregants that this is Jesus, right? Or that this is the second coming and that people need to give themselves yeah. to it. They need to offer up their children like Abraham offered up Isaac to God. There's so many cool visuals you could pull off with that. But everything I just said is inference because mm -hmm. we're like, if maybe if he found like, an altar underground in the in the 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 cellar right then maybe that right. would have some more explanation as to why the mom doesn't even want to mention the grandfather's name but if that's the case then the mom should dissuade her son from going back there at all if it was to that level of extreme yeah so, it doesn't it, there's there's too many things left i mean like the biggest thing being the grandpa i mean especially if the whole thing is like pretty much they're saying that the prosper that this basically new deity that falls to earth and is living there is offering the town for consumption to eat or for consumption is immortality is what they're saying yeah. or at least yeah. a prolonged life right G give us it, your young and we'll give you long life basically which which is it, which honestly i i think this is the reason that the story frustrates me so much because that is such a cool premise because fun. it is yeah. it is a church that deals with like a lot of American Gothic aesthetics, deep water chapel, right? How cool is that? But then yep. it, th what the church is theoretically doing in our head canon for it, at least is they're doing what a lot of the pagan religions of the old Testament would do. They would serve up their children to Baal and to the false gods so that they were given strength and ma magic and long life or what have you, that they're yeah. reverting to this old Testament evil. It's such a cool idea, but everything we just said is like, maybe this is what happened. And sometimes that's cool in horror, like leaving it up to the audience's imagination, but not entire plot threads, not entire, you know, no, character changes I mean, changes there's, too, and there's, stuff. there's too much left. There's too many um, things given at the beginning that I don't think fully come around. Because I think, like you're saying, there's ways where you can leave it to where it's like, well, dude, is he supposed to find out everything? And the answer is probably no, realistically, yeah. the majority of the time. But I think that you can at least unveil enough to where, you know that at least you can let your mind run with it a bit more with some of the information that's given to you. I mean, dude, you're given giant eggs in the woods. D yes. And correct. it's like, and it's one of these things where it's like, you're giving all of these, these kind of big subject matter or themes in the story. And they never really come back around. Like, I'm almost wondering if instead of a, a kid who is, who isn't even graduated college yet, a college student who's given a house, right? Instead, if it was something where it's like, hey, um, the grandpa's alive and he's been alive way too long and he's still alive and he lives there and you're taking after your, you're taking care of this grandpa character or whatever. Yeah. And now you have this, the eyeless bald woman who that basically would survived also, this mutilation. That would give him more reason to not leave, right? Beyond just, exactly. I feel for some reason I need like, to stick around. Yeah. You need to stick with him. You could also have the mom who survived that was chosen to be the one where he's like, I choose you to live and I'm going to sacrifice your sister, your twin sister. He could feel, she could feel some kind of like loyalty to this religion where she's like, you need to take after your grandpa, blah, 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 all this stuff, which is also why you could have the uh, woman who survived this attack um, uh, is basically um, resentful towards this father and has been like trying to kill him or do something along those. You can just set up that stuff, right? Yeah. And then you have the town of people who is essentially a cult who's like worshiping this kind of God or this religion. And you can have more themes than that, but it just really doesn't explore any of the things that I wish it would have. Cause like you're saying, dude, it sets up all these cool things. Um, that, that's and the only know, reason I, you, that I care because it is cool. It is cool yeah. ideas that are being put out there. It's just not really yeah. going anywhere. Like, for it example, the, the, the egg thing. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Well, I was just saying, it's my first Twitter ARG. I have nothing else to compare it to. So the approach to this is still new to me, but it still feels like, you know, even if it is kind of a, a new way of telling a story, I still think that you need some of those those pieces of information, some of those plot threads or something <laughs> yeah. to, uh, to put in there. Like, okay, for example, the egg thing, right? 
if there was given more explanation, like say for example, we find out maybe there's yeah, what would be cool is if let's say his grandfather is the pastor of this place would explain how he owns the building. Um, and obviously it quit being a church at some point cause it was renovated into a house. Uh, or maybe it'd be even creepier if it was a church and then the townspeople renovated it into a house cause they needed his grandson to be there for some reason. See all the stuff I'm doing is like conjecture. It's not stuff that's in the story, but for example, the egg thing, right? Maybe mm. he finds his grandfather's book of sermons or writings or something like that. And maybe it is a kind of idolatry for them to disrupt the image of the womb, the image of the egg. Maybe that's why there's no eggs in the town because it's a disgrace to their new God. That is a feasible explanation, but as it stands in the story, it's just really goofy. Like they can't eat eggs because they like, because they worship the big egg. What? There's nothing, like, there's nothing that comes full circle. It's like, yeah, it's like they worship the big egg or whatever. Yeah. There's nothing that really get, makes sense to why that's not in the town or there's just too much. Too and, much like, and like, and, and, and sure, it'd be a bit cheesy, but if if he could find like a writing from his grandfather in his shelf of books, which is where I thought that was going to go in the story, have some detail where it's like we should not put forward the idolatry of our god to blah blah blah, well, whatever. Make it old, you know, Bible thumping horror, whatever. That's fun. Um, but they don't do that, so it's just like, oh, you can't eat eggs. You have you have the Benedict just don't, on don't the menu. The diner. Yeah, exactly. Don't just the diner and don't be like, I got an eggs Benedict without the eggs. It's like that that doesn't feel satisfying. And, and, uh, it doesn't come. It doesn't come back around. I will say too. I just wanted to say this while it's on my mind. Is also I think you should have. I think you themed this thing as well to make it like harder to leave. Him continuously being like, all right, I'm leaving. I don't. I, I, this is crazy. Yeah, I can't leave yeah. this new property. Sure, whatever. He, I think if it was in the dead of winter and you're snowed in, snowed in's a good it's one. Like a much colder environment. It's gonna be a lot harder to leave a town when it's like I physically cannot drive out of the town. S snowed in, and then you could even have you could have t town members being like, I really wouldn't drive up there. Yeah, you even yeah. have all these you have all these elements too of him being like windy roads. It's like it'd be unrealistic. See, There's no way. What happens? And this is a lesson to anyone out there who wants to write. Not that I'm a professional writer, but I dabble. Like. What happens when you make an answer two-dimensional? Like, why do you want to stay at the house? Because I want to stay at the house. When you do something like that, you tie your hands for the rest of the story, right? Because mm -hmm. then you have to have scenarios like, okay, well, Greg needs to come back to the house later in the story. So I want to stay. I'm going to go stay at a motel. I actually want to stay, so I'm going to drive back now. Oh, look, my car's stuck. Rather than it, if you, like what Hunter suggested, you could have it be he snowed in and like his car gets stuck in the ice so he has to begrudgingly there return needs to home be elements what there needs to be elements out of your control what you what i would do the, the, if i was writing this story i would have his grandfather be like the house is willed to him but his grandfather's like bedside like he's comatose almost in the house dude, and way creepier. and now the sun's Creepy there and so he can't leave because his 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 grandfather's there, but the grandfather can't speak unless later in the story it becomes convenient for him to. Then you have the whole cavalcade of you have your your book of information delivered right there at the bedside. Then you could keep the eyeless woman as more of a mysterious figure later into the plot and have as his an suddenly lucid grandfather talking mm -hmm. about the new moon. You can have you, you give yourself options when you don't just make it well yeah, i feel yeah. like i need to stay because i feel creepy, like i need to stay yeah creepy grandpa on his deathbed is like or he's like dying and he's just like maybe he's resentful or he he feels guilt about the things that he did or something like that he's walking around aimlessly he could wait gray could wake up and be like yeah my grandpa is just standing in my room looking yep, at me yep All and then, these different then you could have scenes you know, where like the eyeless woman you could have grandpa be like i talked to her today or something like that right she's like she's not supposed to be here yeah yeah she's stuff like that to be here like it's, yep. it's and then you don't have to do stuff like it was fine in the story like it was a creepy moment the whole is someone watching you sleep right now but then you don't have to use dream conversations to lure back yeah. in to get you could just have like a, the old man be kind of the delivery for that stuff you could do a lot you know of really cool crazy stuff here? with it what? This is the first time we get Isaiah hater mode, dude. No, no, okay, hold on. Your, no, 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 Don't wish that on me. Don't wish that on me. I'm not hating. It's because this is so good of a setup that I'm jealous. Yeah. I, for one, I'm jealous. I didn't yeah. come up with it, for one. But two, 
I'm upset that it's like you were you were right there. You were rounding second base and you yeah. tripped, right? Like I uh the entire setup is amazing. The early videos and the photos of like the woman standing there, she looks at them all creepy, done extremely effectively. It takes a cornballish look on the eyeball thing, which obviously pays out with like, oh, they're eating the eyeballs, but they're it's eating like, the eyes, yeah. Yeah, why yeah, was the like, eye oh. there uneaten? What did that have to do? What's what I mean is like so. And it wasn't like, the ah, new well, move. I, got the, I, well, so, I, I, I ripped yeah. the eye out, but ah, I'm just gonna leave it. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, never yeah. Mind. Apparently, I these eye-eating chicken things don't actually need to eat them that bad if they're willing to just throw them out. And also, like, I'm, uh, okay, most stories like this would keep it to a purely paranormal angle. They would, or supernatural, I should say. They would have it that the cult worshipped the devil, or they worshipped. Mm. Um, a, an a ghost, an entity in the lake, whatever. like the Lady of the Lake or whatever, right? You could have something sure. like that. I'm not saying it has to be that. As a matter of fact, I think it's kind of cool if it's a physical monster or like a race of monsters. I think that's a neat touch, right? If if played differently, you could have the town worship like the things in the lake, like these lizard people yeah, things or I whatever. That. that could I be a lot it. of fun. Yeah. But when your execution of it is giant eggs, like just don't show the eggs. Just say there's dude, just brutal. say brutal. say dude, okay, what? look, here's your change for that. When they hatch, they crawl out of the water to get food. They kill and then they go back to the water. So then you could play with footsteps around the shores of the lake. You could Bro, have. Does it, does it make sense that creatures from a lake that live underwater lay their eggs on land for them to crawl back? And does that make sense? It's like it's like the the, uh, the sea turtle thing. You know how sea turtles do that. <laughs> I, like... <laughs> yeah, but it's like so. And, but let me tell you, let me say this too. If you introduce, dude, if you introduce giant, sea giant eggs into your story, yeah. and you have photos of it, you better have a good explanation yeah. for it. It's yeah. all I gotta say. That is a ballsy, it's, ballsy, it's ballsy thing to put in a, it, a it story. Is, it dude. is a thing to throw out there to be like, crisp, yeah, I got eggs, crisp porcelain white eggs and you know what you know what if he executed well on it i would have been like Dude. insane uh oh my god it would have been i would have been like you know it, it, how do you make eggs come full circle in this way and if it was satisfying it would have been amazing and, and I've, it doesn't really, i've it given doesn't get some there. theories to how you could like maybe maybe the, okay, maybe you take away some of the supernatural aspect and it's more animalistic. It's more like giant dinosaurs or whatever. And the only reason there's this cult development around them is because his grandfather pushed a cult mindset onto the people. And maybe that's why they still serve him. Maybe you don't need to do a ritual at all. Maybe the, the dinosaurs don't give people supernatural abilities. Maybe it's just this broken conviction members of this town have maybe you could do something like that and then you could like i said tie in like eggs like eating eggs or whatever as goofy as it is was seen as like a form of uh hypocrisy or heresy or what have you like you could you could do fun stuff with it but as it stands it's like yeah so anyway this giant super smart ghost thing it lays eggs and then the eggs eat twins eyes mm -hmm. uh, also you can't what do, eat what do you mean they start with the eyes they eat people why do you need to start with eyes you can just what's that say there, there's so there's so many vision like where it's like so they just mindlessly eat eyes and then they go in the water like and if the whole I, thing I, with them okay maybe i am getting isaiah hater mode now if the whole thing with them is that the only reason this whole transaction goes through of like townspeople get old and live a long life because they feed their children to it how does things like the eyeless woman getting away happen what they don't go grab her and bring her back because her getting away endangers their whole cult practice by sacrificing children to it and they just let her live in the woods now she spent like the past 20 years as a blind child in the woods <laughs> with That's no I mean. supernatural abilities it's just dude, a blind woman we i have to reiterate this dude because i know i got we i got some hate last time when we were talking about the well don't worry i'll get the hate this time yeah. we're, we're getting the hate that we're gonna get some hate this time but i'm just saying that it's just because it kind of feels that the story here was that it seems like Greg was just like, I'm getting bored of writing this. I'm just going to end it. It's how I, it I think what happened. You have so okay. much, you have so much fun set up. It sits up so fun. I was like, so hooked, dude. I got so hooked D in. Deepwater Chapel had and, me and, by the neck. And then, 
Yeah. Dude, exactly. And then you introduce the eggs, and I'm like, that's when I was like, you'd be a better have something. It's a chance. Because that, we're getting yeah. in. And it didn't deliver. Because it you can't deliver. have the eggs, dude. You have the eggs, you and then have you the have eggs. a red. You cannot have You the have eggs. the red blur across the road yeah. after that <laughs> to where you have the literal chicken cross the road <laughs> message. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And then you don't have a follow-up. You, you, How does that happen? You know what? Okay, there's two options here. Option one is Greg is probably someone who writes elsewhere. We keep saying Greg. That's probably not their real name. But yeah, whoever... I, I cannot find the name of the person. Whoever, so I whoever the author is probably writes elsewhere. So Gre the Gregory 88 was like, oh, let me do a fun little Twitter ARG. So it was something they were kind of doing off the dome, you know? And then I think well, they wrote themselves into a corner, right? Like they get, they get near the end and they're like, ah, this, they were asking themselves a lot of the questions we were like, well, what does oh the thing look God. like? What does it do? What? Isaiah. What? <sighs> Dude, Greg's follows on Twitter is the fucking writing cast for Big Mouth. <laughs> look, look at his God, did did was this was this Twitter ARG written by a big mouth writer? <laughs> There's no way! Oh my God! Oh God! This is John Mulaney. <laughs> oh God! Oh my God! No. There's no way! I, I'm done. I'm done did, with this. Did we just get I'm trolled done. super hard? This is I can't tell if I just got trolled or what's going on, but this I I we have to I'm gonna let the, the listeners and the I'm gonna let the, <laughs> the listeners and the viewers figure this one out on their own, but I, I, I am mentally tapped. I I, I, I don't I, even know I, what I'm I, I, Okay, say. hold on. Let me propose one more theory about the author. Sure. If sure. it's not a big mouth writer or <laughs> Or someone who wrote somewhere else, they were just passively writing, making it, and then I think they wrote themselves into a corner of like, okay, well, he wants to stay because I didn't really give him a reason to, and the eyeless lady's there, but I didn't really give a reason for that. So they're like, okay, I'm ending it. One series of tweets, we're done, right? Or here's my other theory that I thought about while we're reading this. Do you know what this whole thing sounds like to me? What? This sounds like a college writing project. Oh, it could be. Like an assignment? Yes. I hear a ton, because it takes place over the course of a winter break, right? Well, not quite. It starts a bit earlier. Could have told sure. to start earlier. But it pretty much Second takes place over, uh, yeah, over the course of winter break, right? So, hmm. uh, like, from 2018 to 2019, I hear a bunch of college assignments. People will tag me in them sometimes and be like, hey, I made this Twitter thread for university. I'm taking a writing class, and we had to put do a story using twitter or we had to do a story using like right. uh instagram or whatever right like they'll use they'll incorporate social media into assignments yeah and the setup of oh i'm a grad student my grandfather has a house it sounds like they came up with the basic premise they did some stuff and then oh the assignment's almost done i better wrap it up now that's what it kind of feels like to me. i could see that i mean i could see that the thing too is i don't know if i agree with writing in a corner because you set up so many angles it's like you, you're saying, well, like, I, 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 I mean, corner. I mean, they wrote themselves no. into a corner right before the last post, like when they sure. added sure. The, the all the different stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Early sure. on, there's I a mean, lot of I'm, I'm saying that your theory of it being a, an assignment makes a lot more sense. Where it's like, oh, it's a deadline, so it's just got to be done. Yes, because yeah, yeah. everything else is they set up they set up a lot of great things in it. I agree. You know, yeah. Um, so I, I I don't know. I think that like they had all the actions and all the avenues, and it seemed like they had enough traction and, and people were excited about it to where you could write this thing in so many different doses of like, yeah. oh, I do updates every three days, I do updates every month or something like that. Um, because here's the thing too, is you can't leave it on like, all right, I'll be back. I'm gonna come back and I will see if I can defeat the giant chicken or puberty monster that's plaguing <laughs> the puberty monster. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> and then and then never touch it again it's like you would have to end it in a way where it's just like oh kind of like um kind of like what what story did we read where it was kind of like 
uh, I'm going back. Uh, I'm going to go back and I'm going to see what I can do. I think that was stair stairs, right? Where it was like, hey, this is my post. I'm going to go see what I can do. Um, uh, I'll let you know did, what stairs, back. did stairs end that way? Because there's more parts to I'm stairs. I'm trying to remember what story Maybe we, that... we read that. I'm trying to remember which one we there's read. There's more sections to stairs besides what we read that was like made later true. and stuff. That, so. Yeah, that's, that's, that's true. So It, it may have ended know, that way. It, it, ending in a... In ending in a way where it's like, hey, I tried doing something. I'll let you know what happens. And then you don't post to where it's like, oh, Ted the Caver. That's what I was thinking of. Ted the Caver is like, hey. I'm oh, going yeah, back yeah, in. yeah. T yeah. The, I'm Ted going back in. I'll really, let you know if you think about it, it Ted like the Caver was the first Creepcast episode before it was Creepcast. So that's fun. But yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So I think like that is how I see like that's maybe we, maybe a way you can end it. But you can't like just have the story where it's like, by the way, I had it on Zillow. I took it off Zillow. I'm yeah, not going to sell yeah. it. And it, it's just that kind of thing. I don't. You know. know. You know what? You know, you know what? what? I'm. All, I, I'm curious to hear what people have to say. I'll about go. It. I'm I'll, you, you know what? I'll be this pretentious. I'll be this awful about it. I think January the fifth, twenty nineteen, there were they were about to go to school the next day or the next couple days. It was that weekend. He makes the thread, turns in the assignment, then he gets on the account and makes the what eight tweets that are like, uh, "I may update this later." By, like, that. That's my call. I think it was an assignment of some kind. That's why it it's ended so move. quick. That's why it hasn't been picked up since then. Which, for a college assignment or for an early rider, this is fun. It's got great bones. I think there's a lot more you could do with it. I think if this is a first draft of a story, excellent. Great. I just wish that maybe it spent a little bit more time in the writer's room, so to speak, before because there's so much good potential. Whoever wrote this has great gibbs as a writer, has great stuff to go forward with, and I think they can adapt a lot of these ideas into something really impressive. Yeah. Again, no, the, only, the only the, reason I have any frustration with this is because it's so cool. Because I Yeah, see I mean, like, go. you know, yeah. we, can, we can reiterate that all day of, like, we're not saying that it's, like poorly we're just saying that it had all the opportunity to do something really crazy and cool um and it just like felt like it you, you pulled the rug out from underneath it too yeah. fast so but, you know it's, it's a fun one I, but, I will um i will also add um unless it, this was written by nick kroll in which case you got me <laughs> i mean dude if it's a, if it's the biggest big mouth troll on earth and we're just like reading into something that they did for an episode i'm gonna feel like such a fucking dumbass I don't even know what to do with myself. <laughs> well it was 20 so. it was 2018 2019 i don't think so i will say this though go to the account and see what their one like tweet is i feel like this is a good ending for you it's alexandra on 1619 which was before um the story was done gregory oh my god is she a twin does she used to live in the house maybe she's your mom's sister and there you go I think you're right. That's, I think that's, that's passive I, 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 confirmation I, I, that you were right. Yeah. I feel like it's. I, I feel like it was um, an obvious thing where I feel like if it would have been given more time and stuff, uh, I think it would have been a really fun reveal. I think having her just clumsily kind of show up, and I will be critiquing this way too. I think just having her show up and be like, "Let me tell you what happened," and he's like, "Okay, um, guys." I'm going to talk to this crazy woman who's been leaving uh, Blair Witch style stuff outside my house. I'll be back. I'll be back. Okay. Yeah. Guys, I'm back. Here's what she said. I got me, the lore feels, dump. Eh. Yeah, yeah, I got the yeah, lore dump. So. I, I think you... I, You know what? I want this to happen. I want Gregory88 to come back. I want to see the story adapted more of like the grandfather aspects, more of the town aspects. I think mm -hmm. it could be fun. Um, but Because I really like the ideas. But yeah, I think there... There were definitely mistakes made, but it wasn't ruined. Like the story's not broken or anything. Dude, I, I, I would like to see it. it. Yeah, I had fun reading it. It was a good at the time. End of the day, I'd like to see it come at the back. End of the day, I had fun reading it. I'm like I said, I know I've said it a billion times. I'm curious to hear what people say, like what people think of it, um, and just because there's so many people, are, the people who listen to the show and who comment on like YouTube and stuff. Some of the things that the theories they have are so fun to read that I'm like, you know, it it, it always adds a whole new level to the story experience. So. We're gonna leave it in your hands, and once again, this has been uh, this has been Gregory 88's uh, first Twitter ARG. I will say the Twitter ARG, I thought it was fun. I'm, I'm stoked it's to a read fun more format, of these. Yeah. It, 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 it's fun to see it in these little bite-sized kind of um, ways of having to keep in mind of like Twitter's uh, word count cap and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
so it's 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 a lot of fun i'm stoked to go into it as well and i'm curious to see if there's any other twitter args our beautiful listeners and viewers have for us so be sure to leave it down below and as always we'll have to throw this at the beginning as well but be sure to check us out on audio platforms like spotify apple podcast all that stuff it really helps us out and be sure to go there give us a nice rating all that kind of stuff we appreciate it and uh isaiah anything else um uh... I had a great time. Enjoyed it. I will say that at the time this episode goes up, I think there's like eight hours left or something close to that to get my Windigoon t-shirt here and Windigoon beanie. Um, the, Which I'll, I love well, that shirt, dude. The oh, cryptid tour. You. That's very kind. I'll, it's so, I'll get, so fun. I'll get you and your wife one then. I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, don't if, get if, her if, anything. If, I just want it for myself. All right, I'll get I'll you. I'll, jealous, get, I'll get you two then. How's that sound? <laughs> there you go. And a size that's far too small for me. Yes, that she could correct. definitely fit yeah, in. Yeah, you're getting a you're getting a uh, XS for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, so, so, and someday we'll have to have some nice creep cast merch. I think we're just waiting a bit till we get into that and. Yeah. Uh, you know, before we before we start doing that, but yeah, like I said, be sure to go check out the the shop on. Is it just windagoon.com? It's windagoon. Windagoon shop. Windagoon dot shop. So windagoon dot shop. Yeah, it's it's going to be available for like twelve hours after this is up. Uh, so if you missed it, you missed it. But <laughs> if you want to get it on it, get it while you can. Other than that, uh, be sure to go follow Gregory eighty uh, eight. The e is spelled with a three. Follow Gregory eighty eight on Twitter in case the story ever starts up. I'd really love to see it do that. Um, but other than yeah, that, yeah, I think that's so. all I got. Thank you all for Very watching. Good. Thank you all so much for watching or listening from wherever you are. We appreciate you and stay spooked. See y'all later.